So guys what if Naruto was reincarnation of Seraphall husband in high school movie? A 13 years old Sona Citri sighed in defeat as she was again failed at mirroring her sister's spell in creating the enormous form of the sea monster, Leviathan, that was her hundreds trial, yet none had succeeded, Sona was aware that her magic energy was not high enough to create such enormous monster, however, she wanted to prove her sister that she was strong enough to handle things on her own. It is okay, so Tan, your big sister will be happy to help you every day, for now, why don't you rest in this big sister's warm and loving hug? Sona frowned, it's not that she hated how carefree her sister was, but she was annoyed that her strength was so pale in comparison to hers, of course it was normal, after all Seraphal was one of the four great satans, it would be an insult to Seraphal if Sona was close to her in strength. Not yet, dear sister, I indeed failed at creating that spell, but I may be able to use another high level spell, just watch. Oh, my. How can I become a good big sister if I can't even support her dear little sister? Right. This big sister of yours shall do her best at supporting you. Go so tan. Let your youthful shines bright light a diamond. It was embarrassing to hear that, but luckily no one was there to listen. Ignoring her dear big sister, Sona began concentrating. Magical energy arose, surrounded her small slim body like a blanket. Then, an enormous blue magic circle appeared on the ground. Heed my call, wandering sea spirit. In all sudden, all magical energy left Sona's body. If not for her sister who moved fast enough to hold her fallen body, she would no doubt have hit the ground, luckily enough, Sona hadn't lost her consciousness. The magic circle Sona had created shone so bright like it had become the very source of light, the light remained there for almost a minute, before gradually fading away, what remained there was not something they expected, but a very pale dying male human which seemed as old as Sona herself, it was nothing like what Sona wanted to see. He had short spike fair blonde hair, he wore orange jumpsuit, though it was not in a good condition, there was scar. Actually a very large scar on his right chest, saying it a hole was not an exaggeration, that wound looked fresh, there's blood leaking out of its vein, whoever caused that hole, Sona firmly believed that he, she wanted to kill him slowly and painfully. Tell me big sister, he isn't the supposed to be wandering sea spirit, is he? He had died, that furball bastard refused to help him. It went as far as saying that it would be revived a few years after they both died. Naruto wanted to shout, yell, scream, or anything which would annoy that fox. However, the Nine Tails fox simply closed its eyes and pretended that he did not hear. Naruto was angry. No, he was beyond furious. Oddly enough, it was not to the fox, but to himself and that bastard Uchiha. He had considered that guy a friend, best friend, a brother in all but blood. Yet, that guy had killed him. He had gone as far as shoving that damn Chidori into his chest, Naruto felt betrayed, he felt so angry that he wanted to punch himself over and over and over so that he stopped become naive and stupid. If only he took his life as ninja seriously, if only he stopped seeking for attention, if only he forced himself to read books. Sadly, it was now meaningless, his tears meant nothing, his regret was worth nothing in the end, he had died, end of story, there's nothing he could do to bring himself back to the living. Naruto. That voice forced Naruto to stop his train of depressing thought and raised his head, a pair of blue eyes, quite similar to his, stared warmly at him. That blonde hair was also the same shade as him, if not for the sharp chin and the lack of whiskers, Naruto would say that he was staring at the adult version of himself. But Naruto knew better. That man staring at him with a warm gentle smile at his face was someone he had seen, precisely. It was the face he every day stared at with grin on his face, the man standing before him. Fourth Hokage, Naruto, how old are you? Many questions began filling Naruto's head, but, he managed to calm down, he had made so many mistakes by rushing everything and treating things like everything would be alright as long as he kept trying, not anymore, that Naruto who lived to seek attention had died, he had to think carefully now before opening his loud annoying mouth, or so Sakura described him. Thirteen. Naruto answered, he did not bother to stand up, it didn't matter if the guy was the fourth Hokage or that he could be mistaken as his father, Naruto wasn't going to stand up, he was tired. Thirteen years old, huh? The fourth Hokage, whose name Naruto didn't remember, looked sad like he was remembering something unpleasant, I have questions, he said with sorrowful eyes, but he didn't wait for Naruto's response, but I don't need your answer because I have seen it from within you, I am sorry. Naruto was taken aback by the fourth Hokage's demeanor, more so with him saying sorry, as far as he concerned, 
His death had nothing to do with the man, it was his and that Uchiha's fault, and yet, the man was the one for some stupid reason saying sorry, wait. What do you mean with I have seen it from within you? Naruto. I am the one who sealed the Kyubi inside you, fourth Hokage replied with face full of regret, to ensure that he would not escape when the seal got weakened, I sealed a part of my chakra into the seal, that is how I have seen it from within you. Now Naruto understood it, he so fucking understood it, the man stood before him, that goddamn man was the one at fault, he had caused him every shitty thing in his damnedest life, it was his damn fault, his very damn fault. Naruto. I am the fourth Hokage. How can I ask for another child when I can't sacrifice my own? I can't do that, as a Hokage, that is something I need to do. Those words stunned Naruto a little, he was not stupid, okay, he was stupid, but not anymore, he had enough of stupidity, that's why he racked his damn brain so hard to understand the meaning behind those words, to fully understand the situation. Naruto. I am your father, that's it, with the speed shock even the fourth Hokage. A punch had found its way on the mon's gut. It was not one. Naruto drove another punch, and another, and another until he was tired of it and fell backward. He cried. All emotions were exploding in his brain at once. He was angry, felt betrayed. Yet he was happy. Finally, after so many lies thrown unto his face, the truth had unrevealed itself. He had a father. He was not a demon brat. He was not a monster. He was normal like other people. He had a father, and he should have a mother as well you hit hard, but I very much deserve it, the fourth Hokage, who later introduced himself as Namikaze Minato, smiled weakly as he said that, but, putting all things aside, I am so happy to finally meet you, my son, I have no right to call myself your father after putting so much pain in your life, but from the deepest of my heart I wish to hear you call me father. It matters not, father, I am about to die anyway, so, who is my mother? I am sure you didn't create a female clone to insert your seed inside her, did you? What? Of course not. Kashina would kill me before I can do something so perverted like that, surely. Jiraiya Sensei has shared his traits to you, hasn't he? Oh, so you are implying that if I don't know then you will consider it, dear husband. And, Naruto, you're still 13. How on earth that perverted thought exists inside your head? Did that pervy sage fill your mind with such garbage? That voice which had just interrupted the conversation between two blondes belonged to a red-haired beauty, her facial shape was similar to Naruto, but she didn't have whiskers and her eyes were violet, even though she was smiling, the rare frightening motherly aura surrounded her. Kashina, mother, Karama couldn't comprehend what had just happened to him and his Jinchuriki. When he was about to die, suddenly a void appeared out of nowhere and sucked the unconscious body of the stupid brat, he couldn't recall quietly what happened inside the void but he faintly remembered that a blonde man inserted his soul inside his Jinchuriki's body, if he wasn't mistaken, that man proclaimed himself as Gilgamesh, the king of heroes, that Gilgamesh declared that the brat was lucky to be chosen as his temporary host. However, it prompted the sleeping soul inside his Jinchuriki to awake. Asura didn't like it that a stranger soul suddenly invaded his transmigration's body. Karama didn't know what happened afterward, but it seemed that both souls had ceased to exist, leaving only their prowess behind, the power was big, Kurama could feel it deep inside Naruto's soul, should Naruto manage to tap into that power, it was highly unlikely had beat the boy into submission, moreover, the chakra of that bastard blonde Hokage and his former Jinchuriki had already interacted with his host's consciousness, Kurama couldn't find way to escape the damn prison. If only he knew of these beforehand, had surely healed Naruto's injury, sadly for him, he couldn't undo what already happened, it was a damn big mistake on his part, who knew that the brat's luck was high enough to take advantage even in his dying time? Karama surely did not. Double mutated knights, not only he has an unknown powerful sacred gear, but also energy similar to Yukai. Moreover, you need Seraphal's help to force those evil pieces inside his body, after that, his energy merged with demonic power, making his already large magical reserves become as large as Seraphal, and he is only 12 or 13. Quite interesting. I am intrigued, you surely have an interesting knight, Sona. Sona was happy to receive praise from her father, but oddly enough, her face refused to show it, instead, her beautiful face was full of concern, she was afraid that the kid would refuse to live as a devil, even though Sona reincarnated him to save his life, Sona wasn't naive enough to believe that the kid would welcome being devil with open arms, there's a possibility that he would curse her. It is okay, 
My instinct tell me that the kid would appreciate your help. Her father assured her with his warm smile. It prompted Sona to smile as well. Putting that aside, where is your sister? Big sister said she will return at dinner. She did not tell where she's going. But I have a feeling that she's going to brag to Lord Lucifer that her dear younger sister has finally gotten her very first peerage member who is far stronger than his sister's very first peerage member. Ha ha ha. It is so like Seraphal. Sona allowed her lips to curl a little. Knowing her dear big sister, that was exactly what she's doing. She just hoped that the words wouldn't reach Rhea's ears. It would be a pain in the ass to handle her whining. Father, I will see how he is doing. Sona said after a minute or so, receiving a nod from her father. It took only a few minutes for Sona to reach the room where her very first peerage member slept. Even though there's no more wound on his body, the blonde hadn't awakened yet. It was as if something was holding him from awoken. As soon as she entered the room, a pair of blue eyes stared at her as if she was the prey he had been searching. Sona felt a bit intimidated at first, but soon she felt relaxes when a small smile found its place on the blonde's lips, his cold sharp eyes had become softer. Warmness began radiating from within those sapphire irises. Were you the one who helped me escape my death? A fifteen years old Sona watched from a distance as her queen lost another sparing session. She had lost count of it, but probably it was their fiftieth or sixtieth sparing session, of which none won by Tsubaki, though, it was not a surprise. It would be a surprise if Naruto miraculously lost against her queen. Her knight was admirably strong, stronger than even her dear big sister. Sona envied him for his strength and tactical battle, but at the same time she admired him for that reason as well, along with his kindness and his workaholic ethic. Ever since he learned that he had become a devil, never once had Naruto cursed her for reincarnating him without his permission, even though he was not happy that he was no longer human. He nonetheless thanked her for saving his life. At that time Naruto murmured that he still had the chance to return, but he refused to talk about it when she asked what did he meant by that. Surely it had something to do with complex magic that her knight studied like his life depended on it. Rune magic, and, space-time magic. Talking about magic, her knight had learned most magic that existed in Citri's library. She didn't know how he managed to accomplish the feats that even a devil as old as her father could not. Though, he only dedicated himself to elemental magic and teleportation magic. He had even brought that magic to an unimaginable level. Teleportation magic was used to move from one place to another, shortening the time it took to a mere second. Yet, Naruto's use of teleportation magic was mainly for combat. It was not an exaggeration when Ajuka Beelzebub claimed him to be the fastest devil inside his magical territory. And thanks to him for helping her in both magic and combat, Sona had mastered her water magic to the level that she could create an army of giant sea serpents with ease, even though she hadn't yet reached the level of her sister, it was admirably enough that a devil as young as her had reached such level of strength, in two or three years, if she kept on training as hard as her knight, surely she would be able to stand equal to her sister, or so she wanted to believe. Sona. Something on your mind. Sona's train of thought abruptly came to a halt as her knight's voice invaded her ears, he was walking alongside a defeated Tsubaki toward her, who was sitting on a chair outside the sparing arena. Naruto had grown taller over the years, so was his blonde hair, his whiskers, which Sona assumed as birthmark, became thinner for no reason, so thin that one had to look closely to see it. Nothing to concern about, she said, by the way, tomorrow Tsubaki and I will start going to high school in human world, are you sure you don't want to join us? I will stay in underworld for a year or two, I'll join you by then, I still need to learn more about magic from Lord Ajuka it is essential for me to master certain magic. Why are you so obsessed with, rune magic, and, space-time magic? Sona finally asked the damn question, probably for the dozens of times since he started learning those magic. I want to know whether this universe indeed has boundaries or not, if it has boundaries, what exists beyond it? If it has no such boundaries, then how large our universe truly is? Since Trihexa is sealed at the end of the world, what exists beyond it? There are so many questions to answer. Sona's thin lips curled upward. That was the first time Naruto gave her answer which was not because those are interesting. And her smile grew bigger as she came to connect the dot behind the purpose of this blonde knight of hers. Do you plan to go to another universe, assuming there's such universe? Perhaps, Naruto didn't confirm nor denied it. He just said there's a possibility her question to be true. Though, whether that possibility remained a possibility was the story for another time. But then again. Her way of meeting Naruto was not normal at all. Could it be that he wasn't human of their world? I see. 
said Sona with understanding, I'll help you as much as I can. You have helped me enough, responded Naruto with a gentle smile, you should focus on your goal, even though the Satans support you, creating such a school will surely get oppressed by the old geezers that govern the entire devil territory, it is like you are insulting the way of the devil, you have to make them to support you one by one. Sona smiled, there's no need to further the argument with the blonde, he was hell bent on excluding her from his goal. And it's fine, Sona didn't need Naruto's permission to help him. Even though she couldn't offer much help regarding time-space magic, her aptitude was not good enough to learn that magic, she had secretly studied rune magic. More than that, Sona didn't forget how she accidentally summoned the blonde through her failure of activating the spell properly, perhaps it would give her insight to figuring out the truth regarding the blonde's origin, assuming that he was indeed a human of another universe. All right, Sona nodded her head, Tsubaki and I will prepare for our departure, we will leave Underworld tonight along with Rias, Akino, and Kaneko, will you return to see our leave? Of course, there's no way I'll miss it, I will bring Seraphal along, she's still whining about you leaving her side, she hasn't returned home for two days straight, probably thinking that you'll change your mind and persuade her to go home and live together just like before. Sona knew that, her sister wasn't happy with her decision to study in the human world, it wasn't because her sister didn't support her goal, like Naruto and both her parents, her sister supported her goal to the fullest, however, she didn't like it that she couldn't stay by her side and pampered her to her heart content, Sona of course happy that her sister loved her so much, but she didn't want to hear her saying that she would be the one to marry her, that's so unhealthy. Very well. I expect to see you and my sister tonight, let us go, Tsubaki. Naruto nodded his head and watched as Sona and Tsubaki left the training arena, Sona's strength had reached those of ultimate class devil, at least the weaker ones, while Tsubaki would soon become as strong as high class devil, with those strengths, they surely could handle themselves just fine. Seraphal didn't need to worry about their safety at all. I prefer the loud-mouthed stupid you. The train of his thought came to a halt as the deep voice of the mighty fox resounded in his head. It was amusing how the mighty Kayubi became a salty guy, but Naruto understood his only company in this foreign world, it was similar to him, if Kurama was prisoned inside him, Naruto was caged by the so-called evil peace, he lost his humanity, and he's nothing but a slave to Sona, even though Sona didn't think it that way, that was the harsh truth, the common opinion among the nobility of devil, even though he took the offer of promotion, it wouldn't change the fact that he's still a slave. People change, Kurama, pain changes them, having experienced near-death situation, finding myself no longer human, stranded in a world where there is no real chakra, it is a miracle if I don't change, if I was my old self, I would never have reached this far, we might never be able to return, is that what you want? This world is not bad, if I managed to take over your body, I'd have become the strongest in no time, there are Yukai in this world, I can easily become their supreme king, kahahaha. Naruto shared the laugh, ever since he dreamt of the life of Asura, the supposed to be his predecessor, he had become closer to the Nine Tails, of course Kurama tried to suggest him to over him his body every now and then, but nonetheless, it was nice, something he appreciated very much. The existence of Kurama was the only thing in this world which reminded him that the world he's living in was not his. As much as I want to indulge you in your delusion, I think I should hurry to meet Ajuka, he has been helpful for my cause, I feel bad for not arriving on time, in a way, he is my teacher. The old you would never do such thing, you pretend to learn magic from him, but in truth you are searching the secret of evil peace in his workplace, you have truly fallen, haven't you? I don't think so, in fact, I have become a better shinobi. HMPH, whatever, I want to sleep, don't bother me. It was funny to hear that from the fox, in the first place, he was the one who started the conversation, Naruto should be the one to say that to the fox, nevertheless, Naruto just shook his head and teleported himself out of the training ground, he appeared right on top of the massive building of Sea Tree Mansion, before creating a small magic circle which would teleport him right to the front door of the Devil Genius workplace. A few knocks on the door, a female devil wearing maid uniform opened the said door for him, Lord Ajuka has been waiting for you, Lord Naruto, she said, motioning the blonde to have access inside the workplace, and in he went. Two years later, Naruto had come to the final conclusion, in order to cross the border of the universe, he had no choice but to go to the dimensional gap, otherwise, nothing could be done to create path to another universe, it didn't matter how excelled had he become at both, space-time magic, and, rune magic. 
It simply didn't work, like Ajuka suggested a few weeks ago. Creating the portal at the center of the dimensional gap is probably the only way to travel to another world, assuming there's indeed another world as we think. It was a simple solution, which both he himself and Ajuka agreed at. However, the problem was the existence of the true dragon god who roamed over the void, that beast was overwhelmingly strong. Naruto indeed had not seen it yet, but he trusted the green-haired devil on his words, in his base form. Naruto believed he could handle Ajuka's Kankara formula, had need a certain sword from the vault of Gate of Babylon, though, if he used Kurama cloak mode, he believed handling both Sirzek and Ajuka at the same time wouldn't be a problem. However, such strength was not enough to defeat the true dragon god, there's an option to seal it, but the problem was there's no place to seal that dragon, and Great Red was too strong to be sealed inside human, yet alone a mere weapon, though, he could seal it inside himself, but, Naruto didn't want to do that, it was too dangerous, the dragon was the ruler of dream. It would pose a problem if he came to sleep while the dragon was sealed inside him, it might be able to take over. There's an option with EA, but the sword was too dangerous to use, Dimensional Gap might collapse just by him unleashing the strongest weapon that existed inside the King of Heroes' treasury, if the gap collapsed, so would the world, for that sole reason, he might never choose to bring out the sword, unless it was the ultimate last choice. There's an alternative case to use EA in a safe way, he needed to prison himself and Great Red in a strong dimension. EA then would be unleashed upon Great Red along with the dimension, thus enabled him to prevent the destruction of Dimensional Gap, however, Creating a dimension strong enough to contain Great Red long enough to defeat him was no easy feat, with his current strength, it hadn't become an option yet, also, there's no certainty that EA could destroy Great Red completely, therefore, it was better to avoid anything risky. Naruto hadn't managed to synchronize Asura's chakra with his. Therefore it was impossible for him to use Asura's six paths senjutsu, according to Kurama, he needed to understand senjutsu to tap into Asura's chakra, in his world. The rare ways to learn Senjutsu, however, in this world only Nekosho could utilize Senjutsu, at least, that's what known about the rarest power existed in this world, and the rare only two Nekosho in this world, Sona's rivals Rook and her sister, and only her sister who's known to be capable of utilizing Senjutsu. Naru Tan. Naru Tan. I am ready. Let us meet So Tan. Naruto's thought came to a halt as that voice screamed its way inside his ears, forcing him to shift his head toward the source. Seraphal in her wholesome magical girl outfit along with magical staff in her hand and a magical hat on her head was already standing a few feet from him with a beaming smile on her face. Naruto smiled. I don't mind accompanying you anywhere even with that outfit, he said, but I think you'll embarrass the hell out of Sona, the worst case, she may refuse to meet us. What? No way. So Tan will never refuse to meet her beloved big dear awesome sister. She is missing me very much, shed jump into my loving embrace as soon as we arrive. Then, how about making a bet? Should she jump into your loving embrace, I will join you on your magical girl show, however, should she feel embarrassed, you will accompany me sight seeing the beauty of Kyoto, how is it? My, Naru Tan. Are you asking this awesome magical girl to a beautiful date? How bold of you. However, I have to stress it that my heart belongs solely to So Tan. You can hold my beautiful hand, but my first kiss goes to So Tan, okay? Having a date with you would be nice, but unfortunately, Seraphal, that is not my intention. You see, I am interested to know whether or not it is true that no other yukai can utilize Senjutsu except Nekosho. As far as I remember, you are the one in charge of foreign affairs, am I wrong? Seraphal became a bit serious, just a little bit. Now that I remember you have similar energy to yukai. Are you perhaps planning to learn Senjutsu, Naru Tan? I think it'll be useful to me, admitted Naruto. No, you'll not be learning it, not as long I am alive. That time, Seraphal's playfulness had disappeared without trace. I think I don't need to ask your permission, am I wrong? Learning Senjutsu is dangerous, Naru Tan. It can cost you your sanity. I don't want to see you get hurt, and I absolutely hate it when So Tan feels sad by seeing you getting hurt. Besides, you are already strong. Naru Tan. Ajuka Chan confirmed that you are strong enough to stand equal to him even when he's using his Kankara formula. You're easily the third strongest devil in the entire underworld. Naruto let a little smile appeared on his lips. He understood Seraphal's reason, but it wouldn't stop him from learning it. Very well. Ill not learn it. Naruto lied, but 
knowing it will not be a problem, right? Are you against it as well? Well, knowing it certainly will not be a problem, very well. This awesome magical girl shall fulfill your desire of dating her, the most beautiful magical girl to ever exist, should she lose the bet. I do not exactly want to date you, but whatever, so, are we leaving now? Of course. The sooner we meet So Tan, the better for me. That said, the two left the underworld immediately, the magical circle brought them just on top of the school's rooftop, Naruto had visited the school twice, so he could teleport to the place without any preparation. Rias was happy that finally she managed to reincarnate Issei who hosted sacred gear which contained the soul of one of the only two heavenly dragons as her pawn, even though she was forced to allow him to be killed in the first place, but she could pay tribute to her dirty play by helping the boy to fulfill his dream of creating his own peerage full of women, however, despite her happiness, Rias couldn't shake the frown at the thought that Issei was weak at the moment. She had planned to go against her arranged marriage with that bastard Phoenix by challenging him to participate in a raiding game against her, and for that purpose she needed strong comrades. So far she had Akino, Kaneko, Kiba, and Issei. Only four pieces, with her included, they're only a group of five pieces, on the other hand, Riser had complete pieces, they were outnumbered, even though Issei had high potential, Rias doubt that Issei could be as strong as she wanted him to be in less than a month, her sister-in-law had informed her that the bastard would come to her in less than a month, Issei wouldn't be strong enough to help her to win by that time. She needed more peerages member, and that was the reason why she was sitting on a sofa inside the student council room. I am sorry, Gremory San, but the president is teaching Saji about magic and devil and etc., she wants you to wait for a few minutes, she will be here by then, that is if you indeed need her. Rias stared at Tsubaki Shinra, the vice president of student council and the queen of her childhood friend, like Sona, Tsubaki was serious, polite, and very strict woman, in term of strength, she was stronger than Akino, Tsubaki's mirror could reflect all of Akino's lightning, her queen's strongest element, that was also the reason why her queen had spent more time advancing her mastery over lightning, that sadist woman wanted to defeat the vice president so bad. Tsubaki was so proficient with her mirror that she could manifest dozen of it at once, heck, Rias didn't know if she could defeat her by herself, if the mirror could reflect her power of destruction, her chance of winning was as low as Akino, after all, unlike her and Akino, Tsubaki was also very good with sword, and her speed was comparable to Yuto's, however, it was highly unlikely the mirror could do that, it would be destroyed before it could reflect the power of destruction. Thank you for informing me, Vice President, I will wait for that few minutes, responded Rias, by the way, Tsubaki. How many pawns she used to reincarnate that Genshiru Saji? As far as Rias knew, Sona had only four pawn pieces left, if she used all, it meant her peerage was complete, that calculating woman worked really fast, and she didn't use any dirty trick to increase her peerage's member. Rias hated to admit that, but she acknowledged her loss. 4. He has a strong sacred gear, he is the reason why Sona gave you the chance to recruit your newest member, though, he is as clueless as your pawn but at least he's not too bothersome to handle. I see, Rias assumed as such, as kind as her childhood friend was, she was still a devil, there's no way Sona would let her had Issei without competition if she had no other option, and as she feared, Sona had completed her peerage before her. Though, Rias could care less about their rivalry, it was not important at the moment, what she needed to think was how to convince Sona to give her one of her peerages member, of course Saji wasn't Rias' target, putting aside his strong sacred gear, what she needed was the one who already strong enough to help her winning the game. Her target was naturally the mysterious knight of Sona. Naruto Uzumaki. Rias had met him four times. Three in Underworld and once in the school. Sona's knight was an exceptional swordman. Even her brother spoke highly of him. His sacred gear was also strong. He could even launch a powerful holy sword from his sacred gear. Furthermore, the blonde was able to use five basic elemental magic. And he was better at it than even Akino. To be honest, Rias didn't know much about the blonde, Sona was kinda protective of her knight, she couldn't get any personal information about him, those four times she met him, they didn't speak much, for some reasons, Sona tried to ensure that she spoke less with the blonde, if she didn't know any better, she would say that her childhood friend had eyes set on the blonde, and Sona didn't want anyone to prey on him. Wait, could it be the actual truth? Rias mused, it could be true. Sona was after all a strict person for her to allow Naruto to do as he pleased even though she and the rest of her peerage were busy in school. It spoke a lot about her favoritism, but then again, 
Rias couldn't fault Sona. Naruto Uzumaki was a strong kind-hearted man, and he wasn't bad looking either. Having met him four times, Rias could understand that the blonde also respected Sona not as the heiress of Citri, but as a normal person, as normal as devil could be, it was natural that Sona acted the way she did. Sorry for making you wait, Rias and Subaki, I leave Saji in your care. Rias thought was interrupted by that voice, when she shifted her eyes toward the woman, Subaki was no longer in the room. Sona then sat right on the opposite of her seat. Those cold calculating eyes were staring at her with full force. In a moment Rias felt it was a mistake to continue her reason to be in the room, but she shook her head as she deemed that her future was far more important than a quarrel with Sona. So, Rias, what can I do for you? Rias didn't reply immediately, she was in deep thought, contemplating on how to persuade her childhood friend. Rias knew for sure that Sona didn't against trading her peerage's member as long as the said person wanted to leave her peerage in the first place, in that case, if she managed to persuade the blonde to join her side, Sona would likely agree, however, if indeed that Sona had her eyes set on the blonde, things would be different. Sona. Rias finally opened her mouth, her right hand brought a piece of night evil piece from her pocket, putting the said piece on top of the table, please, let me borrow your knight for a period of time, Rias bowed her head, I will give him back to you as soon as I beat that bastard Phoenix in raiding games. No, short, plain and simple, that's the answer she received, however, Rias wasn't deterred. Sona, I am sure you can understand how desperate I am, so, please T. No, the voice which cut her sentence was voiced with such coldness that Rias felt as if she was inside a freezer, it prompted Rias to raise his head, staring nervously into those cold piercing eyes. Naruto isn't a tool to be borrowed nor is he a slave I can simply lend to a friend, however, if he chooses to leave my side, I'll not stop him. Rias couldn't hide her frown at the first sentence, but the later sentence succeeded on wiping that frown away, however, before her smile blooming, Sona's emotionless voice stabbed her right in her heart. But unluckily for you, Rias, he is my knight's, not knight. Isn't Tomo Meguri your other knight? asked Rias hopefully. No, she is my rook but she is good with sword, indeed she is. Rias stared intently at those sharp eyes, seeking the lies hidden beneath it, yet, she found nothing, Sona had said the truth, she did not deceive her, meaning, even though Rias could persuade the blonde, she would be unable to add him into her peerage, she had only one piece of her knight, raiding game's system allowed no more than two knight pieces per peerage team. There was a solution, Rias could offer Yuto along with the piece, but she wasn't the kind of person to treat her peerage like a tool. I see, Rias muttered and took back her night piece, thanks for listening to my selfishness, Sona, I appreciate it a lot. Sona nodded her head, gave no more words to reply. Rias gave her a weak smile and walked out of the room, she disliked it that her intention met the unmovable block, but it couldn't be helped, there's nothing she could do to change it, Rias had no choice but to rely on her peerage member. Perhaps she could pressure Issei a bit so that he could be stronger, or not. Sona shook her head and sighed in a deep breath, she had managed to hide her anger quite well, it was true that she had assumed that Rias would one day suggest that to her, and she had prepared herself to reject it, but, the anger she felt couldn't be fooled, she didn't like the thought of letting Naruto leave her peerage, he was her knight, his job was to remain by her side like the knight of a princess she read in a certain fantasy romance novel. It seems you were angry at something if not for the fact that Sona was staring at the source of the voice when those words sunk into her head, she'd have been aghast by the sudden interruption, she had not felt him at all, he just appeared out of nowhere while already taken a sitting position on the window, he sat there with those blue eyes staring at her onyx irises hiding behind her glasses. By the way, I am a simple clone, as of now, my creator is taking a walk with your sister in the school's backyard. Sona blinked twice, but the clone already disappeared before she could choke out any word, Sona blinked for a few more times, before finally she stood up and ran out of the room like her life depended on it, I can't let her embarrass me, not in from of the whole students, yelled the third most famous people in the entire school, she had to ambush them before her sister managed to get the attention of students. Ignoring the confused face of her peerage, Sona walked in a fast pace exiting the student council big room, a room that contained a couple of smaller rooms, she wanted to run, but she could not do that because it would be breaking the law, she was the president of student council, it was unacceptable for her to break the rule. A few minutes later, after ignoring the looks given to her by the student she passed by, Sona finally arrived to the backyard of their school. See, Seraphal, 
She doesn't want you to embarrass her. Naruto pointed out to the pouting Seraphal while nodding his head sagely. Now, let us see the outcome of our bet. Come, so tan. Seraphal yelled with arms opened wide. Here, jump into your beloved big sister embrace. Let us show this ignorant Naru tan that our love toward each other is far greater than even the universe. In a normal condition, Sona had no problem hugging her dear big sister, however, that loud voice of her sister had gained a lot of attention. Some students peeked through the see-through window, some other students happened to visit the backyard. The school was on its break period, after all, their eyes glued to her and her two companions, no doubt wondering about their relationship. Naruto, please escort my sister to my room. You're the only one I can rely on when it comes to my sister's quirk, I'll follow you guys shortly. Sure. Let us go, Seraphal. Ah, don't cry, Sona just. Ah, uh, she is just a shy girl. You can pamper her when no eyes looking, and who knows that maybe she will give you a kiss, or two. I am not a shy girl, murmured Sona with cheeks tainted in pink, but those two had left her alone before those words managed to travel through air. Or, President, are those your sister and brother-in-law? One of the nearby students asked, causing all attention to center around Sona, they look young. If not for your older sister claiming to be your older sister, I'd have thought that she is the younger sister. Sona sighed, before using a middle scale of illusion magic, to erase the memories they had just witnessed, after all, even though they're having a break, having her family members wandered around the school without permission was within the rule that should NT be broken, if the student's family came to visit, they had to wait in the waiting room, only then could they walk around the school without problem. Done with erasing the student's memories of a certain event, Sona left the backyard to return to the student council big room. When Naruto and Seraphal arrived inside the big room of the student council, Sona's peerages were already there. Naruto also noted that Sona had a new member, and his sensor told him that the boy had four pawn pieces inside him, he had such a unique sacred gear, four sacred gears which actually connected toward each other. Naruto could tell that the boy had the potential to be quite strong. It has been a while, Tsubaki and girls, Naruto greeted, gently dragging the ice magic master to sit on one of the empty sofa who is the blonde that looks like he's going to collapse. It has been a while, Naruto, Tsubaki returned the greetings, and it were followed by the five other girls, this is Genshiro Saji, he has just become a devil for a week, the reason why he's going to collapse is because he has just been training, and Saji, he is Naruto Uzumaki, President's Knight and the strongest knight in Underworld, he is also the one I mentioned earlier. Naruto raised one of his eyebrows as Saji suddenly stared at him with 100% focus, Naruto didn't know what Tsubaki told the guy about him, but it was no doubt the reason why the blonde stared at him like he was an opponent he couldn't beat. Prove it. Demanded Saji, his tone and eyes told Naruto that he's not joking, he wanted Naruto to prove his strength, for what end, Naruto knew not, but, it hardly mattered, seeing a teen looking at him with such manly gaze, the best he could do was honoring the new peerage member of Sona. Naruto raised his left index finger. His right hand was busy patting Seraphal's head who was still murmuring my dear little sister doesn't love her big beloved sister anymore. The room suddenly glowed, forming a barrier strong enough to hold Naruto's full strength in base form. Very well, he said, and the room shook violently an instant, in a second, Saji collapsed, the rest could handle his power because Naruto focused his intent only on the blonde, otherwise, none would be left standing the pressure he caused. Can someone tell me? What causes him so worked up? That question left Naruto's mouth as soon as the pressure and the barrier disappeared. Saji has a big crush on Sona, Tsubaki admitted. The rest nodded their head in agreement. She along with Momo picked the unconscious Saji and put him on the long empty sofa near the window. Naruto didn't get it. What was the problem with that? If Saji loved Sona, why would he so worked up with Naruto? He should show that kind of courage to Seraphal, murmured Naruto. After all, Seraphal is the main obstacle for anyone brave enough to seduce her beloved little sister, right, Seraphal? Absolutely, exclaimed Seraphal with a newfound energy, I am the one who will marry So Tan. I will crush anyone dares enough to challenge my position. I am not going to marry you, big sister, it is unhealthy. Sona entered the room, her right hand had found its place on her forehead, massaging it, lessening the headache she suffered, anyway. She said as she sat herself on the sofa at the opposite side of Naruto. Seraphal didn't waste time to throw herself at her sister. It is nice to see you again, Naruto. Are you going to finally leave the underworld? 
It seems so, admitted Naruto, besides, I've said that I will join you in a year or two. A small genuine smile appeared on Sona's lips, though, Sona quickly hid the smile when the stares of the females rested on her face, she faked a cough, before saying, Anyway, I have prepared your uniform, if you fine with it, I can arrange your enrollment right away so that you can start joining us tomorrow. Naruto wasn't interested in joining them in a class, he would rather play with Seraphal than sitting in a classroom for hours, nope, no way, Naruto wouldn't join any class, he wanted to say that, but, looking at those onyx irises full of expectation, it was hard to refuse, not to mention that Sona had prepared the uniform. Naruto would listen to his mother's advice. Don't disappoint a woman expectation when the woman has already prepared everything, that is not the act of a gentleman. If it makes you happy, I will attend the school with you. Naruto and Seraphal left the school two hours since their arrival, it wasn't an easy feat to persuade Seraphal to leave her sister, but he had managed to do that just fine. Naruto had known Seraphal for four years and dozens days, she was not hard to convince as long as the words given to her were credible, since Naruto was close enough to know personal things of Sona. Seraphal had no reason to doubt his words. Currently, as promised, they were heading to Kyoto, precisely, they had arrived to the outskirt of the city. Seraphal had sent her familiar beforehand as not to surprise the leader of the city of Yukai. Hence, it was understandable that as soon as they reached the closest shrine, a priestess, Naruto sensed her as Yukai in disguise, asked them to follow her. You are devil, yet I can feel the energy similar to us in you, the woman muttered and I certainly know you're not a Yukai reincarnated into devil, either. If you can sense that, it means you are very good at sensing, stated Naruto, in fact, you're better at it than most beings. Thanks for the compliment, but it will not make me think any better of devil, Lady Yasaka is kind and passionate, she ignored the past mistakes in order to forge a better future, but the majority of Yukai shall not forget it, remember that. That cold statement caused both Naruto and Seraphal to look at the priestess, but the woman just ignored them. Of course, we will not forget the sin caused by our kin. Even though most of them caused by the old Satan faction, Seraphal replied, her smile was anything but kind. You better not, it ended the conversation, and not long after, they crossed the border in between the humans Kyoto and Yukai's Kyoto, a few Tengus welcomed them, the priestess left them on their hand and returned to the humans Kyoto. Naruto and Seraphal then being guided toward the palace where the leader of Yukai's waiting. Naruto left Yusaka's territory two hours after the sunset, since he was going to leave Underworld for years, he decided to accompany Seraphal to Underworld, at least. That was what he said to the Satan. The truth was, Naruto just wanted to take the few things he had, not many, just a couple of magic papers, clothes, and books, and after having a few words with Seraphal, mainly a promise that the Satan would kill him should harm came upon Sona. Naruto finally left the underworld. Though, he didn't go right to Kuo, Naruto appeared at the outskirt of Yusaka's territory, just roughly three meters from the invisible barrier surrounded it. Naruto called upon his chakra, before finally clasping his hands together, Kuchiyose no Jutsu. A poof of smoke appeared right in front of the blonde, it took a couple of seconds for the smoke to disappear, when it did, a red-haired man an inch taller than Naruto already standing there with eyes closed, the man was quite feminine, no whisker on his cheeks, so that people wouldn't think that the two had blood ties, if only his hair was a bit longer, it would be hard to tell whether it was a man or woman, even though the man in reality was a genderless being. It was not a simple clone, it was the greatest clone in existence, at least as far as Naruto concerned, it was the combination of Fuinjutsu, blood clone, shadow clone, and the idea of a jutsu that could split one into two, biju enchanted clone, named Naruto a rather lame name if Naruto being honest. Kurama, one and only, the clone responded with evil grin, his red eyes with slit pupils were staring intimidatingly at the blonde. But Naruto didn't fear it, Kurama couldn't beat him, with that clone body, Kurama could do more than in his original body, his control over his chakra became perfect, he could do any jutsu he knew, even with only half of himself, the Kurama in front of him would beat full Kurama in his giant body, however, Naruto was the creator of the body, he could disperse it at will. Well, I'll leave the rest to you, you can do as you please, but don't forget of your priority, I'd hate to come to you and say that your freedom has come to an end. HMPH, I don't take order from you, Kurama glared menacingly, however, his voice softened, since you are truthful to your words, I'll help you just fine, consider this a beginning of furry, teamwork, yeah, 
consider this a beginning of teamwork between us. Similar to a woman in one of the shows Seraphal forced him to watch, Karama shifted his head to the right, refusing to stare at the blonde's eyes. Naruto mused, what a tsunere, of course he could not say that to the red head, Karama's pride would shatter, and there's a possibility that he would refuse to talk to him anymore. Then, I'll leave you to enjoy your semi-freedom, I will see you again, Karama. Without waiting for the said person's response, Naruto teleported himself right toward where Sona located, indeed, he had marked the girl with his rune clothed by a simple fuenjutsu, of course without the girl knowing, that way, not only could the blonde teleport himself to her location freely, he could also sense if the sea tree's heiress was in a bad situation. VVV that night, Sona and her peerage only encountered one stray devil, it was quite strong for a mere stray devil, it took all of her peerage, excluding her and Tsubaki, to completely annihilate it. Saji didn't help much since he's still new, but he did a good job at fighting, perhaps in a month, he would be strong enough to handle such stray devil on his own. Sona. Shall we check on Rias and her peerage? Asked Tsubaki as soon as the rest peerage member left them to their home, I did see her new piece visiting the old church. It is not necessary, Rias will ask for help if she needs it, besides, there is no dangerous fallen angel there, Rias should be capable handling them, let us, ah, Tsubaki, sorry to say this, but you can rest early tonight, I have something to do. Tsubaki opened her mouth, wanted to ask her to elaborate, however, she changed her mind when her eyes caught the sight of blonde hair on top of a rooftop dozens meters behind Sona, she didn't feel his presence at all, Tsubaki didn't know if it was Sona's perception or intuition, but she was quite sharp to sense if Naruto was near. I understand, said Tsubaki with a knowing smile, take it slow, Sona. I don't know what you were getting at, Sona adjusted her glasses while maintaining her poker face. Tsubaki gave her a teasing smile and she teleported herself right away before Sona managed to mutter a single word. Once again adjusting her glasses, Sona turned around and hopped herself into the air, with a simple use of wind magic, she managed to launch herself high enough from the ground, before gradually landed right in front of the blonde, thanks for the thin legging she wore, the sea tree's heiress needed not worry about the wind that lifted up her skirt while she was in midair, that way, even though she wanted to see the blonde's reaction, she needed not to embarrass herself. How long have you been here? Asked Sona as she sat herself next to the blonde, not too close, but not too far either, there's only enough space to fit two adult cats in between them. Long enough to see the finishing blow to the stray devil, by the way. Why did you ask Tsubaki to leave? I happened to hear that she suggested on checking the gremory, I was thinking on joining you too, I am quite interested on this boosted gear ability. Sona's stoic face remained there, I want to test myself, she said. Of course that's not a lie. Sona wasn't answering the blonde's question. She merely ignored it and shifted the topic of conversation, to see how far I have become since the last time we spar. A thin smile appeared on Naruto's lips. Sona knew that Naruto knew that she knew that he knew what she was doing. Nevertheless, they ignored that and continuing the conversation. How about a wager? Asked Naruto as he gazed at the full moon hanging above. I am listening. If you can land a hit on me, I'll become a proper student, however, if you fail, I will send a clone to take my place in class. While adjusting her glasses, Sona said confidently, I will ensure that you become a proper student. Then, let us go, Naruto gave his right hand for Sona to take, and the young devil took it without a second thought and asked, to where? Naruto didn't give a verbal response, and Sona didn't need it, either, right after the word where left Sona's mouth, their environment had changed to that of white land filled with snow and ice, there's no doubt that they're in Antarctica. Aren't you being generous? Sona eyed her surrounding thoroughly, she was not excellent in ice magic, but she was good enough, of course it was nowhere near her sister's mastery, nor was it comparable to her water magic, nevertheless, it was her second strongest magic in her arsenal. As far as I remember, there is never a time when I wasn't being generous. Fine, I will not hesitate at all. Yelling that, Sona left Naruto's side to create enough space for them, I win with one hit, and you win when I surrender or fail to get up, is that alright? Of course, have it your way, Sona prevented herself from frowning, she knew that Naruto wasn't looking down on her, the blonde had never looking down on his opponent, unless it was the unworthy one, still, it would better if the blonde ceased his calm demeanor away and took a serious attitude, but, knowing Naruto's strength, it was understandable, moreover. Sona would use his confidence to beat him. 
Inhaling, Sona strengthened her will and mustered her strength. In a second, a shockwave sent every snow around her away, leaving a crater with her on its center. Clasping both her hands, numerous small blue magic circles, more than a hundred, appeared out of nowhere before Sona, and in a second, all of it shot a water bullet which each speed easily surpassed that of the sound speed in air. Such offense was deadly even for a horde of high-class devil. The speed and its number made it difficult to evade, but that was to be expected, in term of its damage, hundreds water bullets was comparable to her seventh strongest water magic's offensive spell, Spear of Maelstrom, it was more than enough to completely destroy Subaki's four-layer mirrors, her third strongest defense through utilizing her sacred gear, that's why a horde of high-class devil would likely not survive, unless they had strong defense or high regenerative ability like Phoenix. However, Naruto was not a high-class devil, he was way beyond that, such offensive spell didn't enough to even phase him, his speed alone was enough to evade the water bullets, Naruto was also a sensor, so, Sona wasn't surprised that none of her water bullets hit their target, she had expected as much, though, that's why that spell was not meant to attack, but to distract. The real deal was the spell she had secretly hid with illusion magic while maintaining her hundreds water bullets spell, while Naruto was indeed a sensor, he was not that great of a sensor, or so he claimed, but Sona didn't take it lightly, hence, she put so much effort to cast such illusion to cover her gigantic magic circle with the minimum amount of demonic energy, therefore, making it hard to sense. Deep sea emergence. Shouted Sona in her head, as expected of Sona, mused Naruto as he saw a tremendous amount of water erupted from the ground, from the amount of demonic power he sensed, save to say that the water cover almost a third of Antarctica. When the water bullets stopped coming, Naruto was already inside a gigantic waterball with diameter exceeded a hundred kilometer, if not for the barrier he casted, he would naturally felt the pressure. There's no doubt that Sona's mastery over water magic was already greater than that of Seraphal's and his, well, he didn't focus himself on water magic, so it was understandable, still, to create such amount of water with a single spell and in a mere second, only Poseidon could achieve the same feat, truly, Sona had grown stronger than the last time they spar. However, this is not enough to, Naruto failed to finish his sentence when suddenly his barrier began to crack, she compresses the water. To truly master her water magic to its highest level, Sona bothered herself to follow the research of human scientist, at that time that she encountered the fact that unknown to the supernatural beings, when you compress the water, it customarily heats it, human had managed to create ice hotter than boiling water, even though it lasted only for nanoseconds, nevertheless, such breakthrough brought Sona to a higher level at understanding her magic. In term of mastery over water magic, Sona believed that even Poseidon was no match for her, however, her problem was the amount of demonic power she possessed, she had so little of it that despite of her mastery, she couldn't do all things she should be capable of, that was her weakness, her demonic energy was pale in comparison to the divine energy possessed by Poseidon, even Rius had more demonic energy than her, although not by a large margin. That's why, to achieve the same feat brought into reality by those scientists, Sona had to burn all her demonic energy, hence, as soon as the water started to shrink and freeze, she had fallen to her knees due to losing her demonic energy, her ultimate spell was supposed to be hot ice explosion, yet, her demonic energy was not enough to perfect her spell, thus, leaving only a hot ice, which diameter was about 50 to 60 kilometers, hanging in the air. That is dangerous, you know, Sona let a faint smile escape her lips, she knew how Naruto managed to escape, with his mastery over teleportation magic, it would be a child play to escape, the only way to ensure that her spell captured him was to ensure that he couldn't teleport, to do that, she had to utilize her rune magic, but Sona didn't want to do that, after all, there's a reason why she studied rune magic in secret. Did I manage to inflict a hit from that pressure? Nope. I know it, Sona let a sigh escape her mouth, before asking. Is there a way to ensure that you can't teleport without trapping you in a dimension or using rune magic? You just have to be faster. Anyway, let me show you something, Naruto said with left hand directed at her, prompting her to hold it and stand. Sona did just that. The two stood shoulder to shoulder, facing the hot ice hanging above. This is a technique I develop after studying Sirzek's power of destruction and a certain technique of an old friend. This technique is based on compressing demonic energy. Seeing you could create such ice by compressing the water, you should be able to do this. Naruto raised his right hand with index finger pointed at the hot ice. Sona looked at his finger with interest. Black and orange energy started to gather right in front of Naruto's index finger, 
No, it was not like a bubble joining another bubble, but more like water being sucked into whole. In a second, a black ball surrounded by orange aura the size of an apple manifested just a few centimeter in front of that finger. There are two ways to fire this ball of demonic energy. First, you launch the ball toward the target. As the words left Naruto's mouth, so was the ball of demonic energy. In a second, once the ball connected to the surface of the ice, an explosion shook the entire hot ice, crack appeared on the entire ball of hot ice, but only roughly one-fifth got destroyed. The second, continued Naruto, another ball of demonic energy already manifested, you force the up front of the ball to accelerate, turning it into a beam-like attack. In a second, the remaining of the hot ice was sliced into two, causing it to fall and shatter to the snowy ground, losing its core. The ice began cooling and slowly became water. Naruto used ice magic, thus turning the ice turning water into a normal ice. I name it Saro. How is it? Sona was honestly amazed by such technique. It was capable of erasing a city with ease, while launching the ball caused a larger area of effect, turning it in a beam made it more destructive. Moreover, it could be used from all range of attack. Truly, that was a flexible technique. Sona wanted to learn that. Later that night okay, putting aside that there are two bedrooms in the apartment, how was it he agreed to stay in the same place as Sona? Ah, right, it was because he used to live in the sea tree's mansion, staying with Sona was so normal that he forgot that there a man and a woman under a single roof, it would be embarrassing to admit that to Sona, not when he became aware of the implication of such thing, therefore, Naruto couldn't bring himself to say that he wanted apartment of his own, and as long as he didn't indulge on such thought, there'd be no problem at all. Nodding his head, Naruto decided to open his bedroom's door and stepped out of it, by that time, Sona had finished her bath and already preparing a small food for their very late dinner. I have prepared the water, said the girl with her faint smile, by the time you're done, the food shall be ready as well. Naruto could only nod, though, he noted that Sona acted like a wife to her husband, but, really, even though Naruto was aware of the relationship between man and woman and their carnal desire, he didn't think that Sona was interested in him in a romantic way, after all, they had never talked in such a way, his relationship with her was like that of a close friend or family, so, it must be his imagination that Sona was acting like a wife to her husband. Indeed, that must be the case, Naruto once again nodded his head lightly. Feeling confident of his thought, there's no way he was wrong, although he would be happy if that imagination was not a mere imagination, Naruto decided not to think too deeply about it, after all, he would not live in this world forever, one day he would return to his world, Therefore, he would try his best not to have deep bond with many people. Once he managed to create pathway to his world, had only say farewell to Sitri family. As soon as Naruto stepped into their bathroom, Sona quickly took of her apron and throw away everything from the table. She teleported herself to a nearby restaurant, quickly ordering some food, then returned to their apartment. Sona tried her best to pretend that she was the one who did the cooking. That's why she erased anything which connected the food to the restaurant. She was bad at cooking. Subaki pointed it out to her. That's why she couldn't allow Naruto to taste her real terrible handmade food. Curling her lips into a satisfied smile, Sona made herself comfortable in one of the only two chairs surrounded the small round table. She was satisfied with how things turning out to be. All things she desired were already within reach. From now on forward, things looked bright for her. Adjusting her glasses, Sona calmed herself. No matter how delight her heart was, it's not wise to let it shown. It was fine to allow a small smile appeared every now and then, but not more than that, thus, she had to maintain her stoic face like usual, take it slow, mused Sona remembering Tsubaki's advice. Karen, have Kabuto returned? asked Sasuke as he sat himself on his throne, Orochimaru's former throne. Not yet, but one of his underlings has reported that the four eyes managed to infiltrate a megacure, if he's slippery enough to escape, we can expect his return tonight or tomorrow. I see. Sasuke nodded his head, eyes shifted to the snake Sanin, Orochimaru, as promise, I will give you my Mangekyu Sharingan after Itachi's eyes are implanted in my eyes socket, with white Zetsu body you're now using, you should be able to handle it without risking yourself going blind, therefore, do not try anything funny with Obito's eye, it is more useful for Karen to use. Orochimaru had gotten back his hands with the help of a certain mask from Uzumaki's shrine, it would be troublesome if he got his hand on Obito's special eye, and knowing Orochimaru, he had also guessed that Kakashi's Sharingan belonged to Obito, Orochimaru would be able to kill him if he got his hand on both Sharingan. 
Orochimaru laughed evilly as he listened to those words, My, my, Sasuke-kun, have you lost faith in your beloved teacher? Sasuke prevented himself from snorting, You are no my teacher, you are helpful in making my body stronger by injecting it with Hashirama's cell. I am my own teacher, now, go, prepare the necessary tool for my eyes transplantation. I want to master perfect Suzano as soon as possible, take the Rinnegan, and collect all the remaining biju. How about the Kayubi? Sasuke didn't hide his frown at the mention of Kayubi, it was unknown to anyone but him that Naruto hadn't died yet, that idiot was sucked by a blackish hole a dozen seconds after he shoved his Chidori inside his right chest, Sasuke didn't know where that hole took Naruto, but he hoped that the blonde was still alive, both of their lives were miserable, Sasuke hoped that Naruto was happy in wherever he was. It doesn't matter, replied Sasuke, 8 biju is enough, we can use that pseudo Kayubi Jinchuriki as sacrifice, if what Obito said about Jubi is real, I think it is better if I don't awaken it in its full power, now go, prepare the table of operation, I want to be ready in an hour. Kukakuku. I can see it in the future that you call yourself Emperor Sasuke who united the world and create an everlasting peace. Sasuke didn't give any response to Orochimaru's comment, though, the snake Sanin was not wrong, he wanted to unite the nations and create an everlasting peace his brother so dreamed of with Black Zetsu sealed by Itachi's Tatsuka blade, no one would bother to revive the real Madara, so, no one would be capable of stopping him, the world shall know peace. Perhaps, after he made Itachi's dream into reality, he'd go looking for Naruto, that's why he wanted Karen to take Obito's Mangeku Sharingan, in the world ruled by him, Naruto could fulfill his dream to be Hokage, though, had not forced the blonde to return if he didn't want to. Sasuke-kun what about those Konoha shinobi we hold hostage? Ah, right, those fools had stupidly chased after him, but their weakling, he had beaten them right after he tricked Obito and killed him. Kill Sakura. Let the rest go, that useless woman is crazy. Not only does she badmouth Naruto, she stupidly dares to say she loves me. I want her death, you can do it as you like, I don't care even if you torture her. Naruto did declare that he loved Sakura but Sasuke thought that the Hyuga was better for Naruto. Sakura was a toxic short-tempered woman. Naruto's life would be a hell ground should he marry that stupid girl. Also, she was flat as hell. Even Karens were bigger than her, albeit at a minuscule level. Are you sure? She crazily loves you, you know, don't ask stupid question. Well, that's good, I don't need to hold myself from using her as an object of experiment. There's no way would Sasuke entertain that Pinky's wild imagination. Even if there were parallel worlds, it would be impossible for those Sasukes to marry her, if such Sasuke stupidly existed, he would personally kill him, a mighty Uchiha marrying a foolish nobody pink-haired woman, there's no greater humiliation to the clan than that. Karen was better than Sakura, her Uzumaki's gen would help him to create a stronger child, the next generation of Uchiha will be the royal clan, they would become the royal family of the whole world, they would be superior to any clan or family, other than Karen. There was Tsunade, the Senju, but, wasn't she a 50 somewhat years old pretending to be 20 somewhat? DXD verse, well, it matters not at the moment, there's nothing I can do about it. What matters is for Karama to claim the ley lines for our own, it will be a last resort if I can't touch Asura's chakra by using Senjutsu, or in case I can't master Senjutsu, by fueling my body with its large energy, nature like energy, it surely will affect Asura's chakra. With that thought, Naruto closed the history book, it was written by human. So the truth was not trustworthy enough, it would be better to send clones to infiltrate their realm and gain information, but Naruto wouldn't do that, there are many reasons, but the first two were that he didn't want anyone to know he could create more than two clones at once, another reason was that Naruto didn't want to have anything to do with them, his purposes at the moment were two, to help Sona and return to his world. Humming. Naruto closed the book and put it on the table, by that time, the bell was ringing, indicating that the class had entered its next period, the class would have its break after another two hours, so, he would be alone in the room till that time, in that case, what should he do now that he had nothing to do? I have been watching you, an intruder from another world. Naruto blinked, and by reflex he leapt away from the chair he was sitting upon, distancing himself from a vortex that appeared out of nowhere on top of the table where he put the history book, a beautiful black-haired girl with pointed ears floated out of the vortex, her face looked void of any emotion, but her eyes held confident and pride. Naruto eyed the what people would describe as gothic lowly carefully, 
He was not a master when it came to sensory ability, but he was not bad either, yet, even with such close gap between them, he could not sense her, no, it was clearly not because she was too weak that he couldn't sense her power, but, the girl was way too strong that unless he went far away from her then it would be impossible for him to measure the gothic lawless power. I am the dragon god of infinity, introduced the girl as she created a barrier surrounded the room, people call me Ophis Ouroboros, Uzumaki Naruto, I want you. Naruto blinked twice, let me elaborate it, continued the so-called Ophis when Naruto blinked in confusion, the power dwells deep in you, I want you to fully master it and help me kill the ungrateful stupid overgrown lizard who calls himself Great Red, in exchange, I will open the way for you to return to your world. Naruto's brain suddenly worked so hard like there's no tomorrow, he had worked so hard to fulfill his main goal, but for Ophis to suddenly come and promise him a way to return home. Was it an insult to his struggle? What the meaning of his hard effort studying a complex art if this being offered it just like that? It's too good to be true. However, facing Great Red, the strongest being in the world, that Great Red? That was not impossible, if Ophis created a large enough space and ensured that Great Red couldn't escape for a certain amount of time, he could smash the true Dragon God Emperor with Aya's full power, if that was not enough, he could reign the Dragon God of Dream with all weapons from within his vault, and if that is not enough, he could prison the dragon inside his vault and ensured that the gate would be closed for all eternity. Naruto could see it, with Ophis, the chance of defeating Great Red was close to 99%, how tempting. Yet, Naruto was no longer a naive kid, that's why it's hard for him to comprehend the situation he was in, if he was his former self, he would have jumped into her offer without thinking much about it, but now. No need to give me your rush answer. I'll see you again in a month, by that time, I want to hear your answer, and to ensure that I am serious about my intention, I will help you awaken your great power. Naruto had no time to respond to Ophis one side decision. An ethereal snake-like energy had pierced his stomach with speed that even he who was considered by Ajuka to have a superior reflex failed to notice, however, there's no pain followed, instead, Naruto felt great power flooding his chakra system, and water the twelve black balls that suddenly appeared behind his back. Also, his sense suddenly skyrocketed to a higher level that it bypassed the barrier and went away that he felt the presence of Kurama in inner Kyo. I can't measure your energy, muttered Naruto with eyes widened wide in surprise. I embody infinity, unless your amount of energy is close to mine, it is unlikely you will be able to gauge my exact amount of energy, I have so much energy, much more than even that disgusting overgrown lizard, though, even with my vast energy, that shithead is still stronger, now then, Uzumaki Naruto, I bid you farewell. Naruto had no chance of responding to the words spoken by Ophis. The said being had disappeared without trace, though, Naruto didn't pay much attention to the disappearance of the dragon god of infinity, he could think of Ophis and her words later, his mind was now busy on the black balls floating before him. So, this is the effect of having six paths senjutsu, the pinnacle form of senjutsu? Does it mean I no longer need to learn senjutsu? Clairvoyance, the ability to peek into the future, was not that special, it was not an ability owned by just a single being. Anyone with a certain level of divinity had the right to stand before its door, though, the higher one's divinity was, the higher their clairvoyance accuracy, so, between the king of gods, Indra, and the god of destruction, Shiva, it was clear Shiva's clairvoyance was better. That was the reason why Shiva didn't bother himself with Indra's plan to wage war against him, his third eye could see the outcome of the war if he concentrated enough, and so far, Indra didn't have the chance to win. Shiva would start to move once his third eye showed the change in the future, unless such thing happened, then there's no reason to soak himself in something unworthy of his attention. After all, excluding those three monsters, of which one was being sealed, he was the strongest being in the world, there's no fun participating in something which warranted him to win, playing as a spectator to amuse himself was a better option, and so, Shiva allocated his free time to solely do nothing but watch. That's why he was now surprised, he had spent a dozen years watching the world through his third eye, and each year showed nothing special, but this time was different, his third eye showed him the revolution that was led by a new Nine Tails being, Yukai from all around the world would migrate to Japan, Shinto pantheon as a whole would flourish, though, there's no chance they would threaten Hindu pantheon, but the change was overall not small. Shiva was interested, this new Nine Tails was way stronger than the current Nine Tails, he was easily fitted in the top 10 strongest beings, 
Of course far from enough to reach top 5, but nonetheless strong enough that the spot left by Heavenly Dragons was filled, meaning, Hades was toppled from the list of 10 strongest beings in the world. Shiva wondered, if he or anyone wouldn't do anything to hinder the Nine Tails who addressed himself as Karama, the future his third eye had seen wouldn't change, it meant, just a couple of years from now, Shinto Pantheon would be stronger than Olympian and Norse Pantheon, in that case, should I pay him a visit? Shiva couldn't find the answer, no, it's not because he couldn't decide what to do, rather, his third eye had shown him something that even the thought before were ignored by his mind, a great battle, one that shook the very sense of the universe, his third eye showed him just that, though, it was not clear enough for him to see, but he could guess that the battle included those three monsters. Shiva couldn't help himself from laughing, had he missed some moments these past years that this image just appeared at the moment? Shiva couldn't tell, but his excitement remained strong, the boring period had now come to its end. Well, let pay Visnu and Brahma a visit, Kuo town. When the bell rang for the last time at 3.15, and after the rest of her classmates left, Sona quickly left the class, Tsubaki had left a dozen minutes earlier to do their job at the school's gate, Naruto, or rather, his clone, had disappeared in a puff of white smoke as soon as the rest student gone, though, there's no problem with it, she had informed the clone so that the real him could meet her near the old school building, there's important thing to talk about, it could prove to be her first step in fulfilling her dream. Before long, Sona's gaze met Naruto's, the blonde offered her a warm smile, a smile she cherished dearly, since no one saw them, Sona allowed herself to return the smile, a bigger one compared to the small smile she offered to the people who smiled at her. I take it you have just arrived? Naruto nodded his head. So, what is the important thing you wish to talk? Since we're going to this place, I take it has something to do with Gremory Eris. Indeed that is, replied Sona as she walked alongside Naruto entering the old school building. About my dream, I have a plan on how to start, and at the same time, I will be able to help Rias with her problem. I want to hear your opinion about it. If you have put it into consideration, I see no reason as to why you ask my opinion. After all, between me and you, we know that you have a better mind than me, I am only superb with things related to battle. But you are not bad either, Sona retorted, more than that, I don't want you think that I am just doing things convenience for me, I am a devil. My desire for things I want is greater than that of human, sometimes I pay no attention to the means, as long as it is not too dangerous or immoral, I'll give it a try, even so, I truly want to help Rias, perhaps that is the main reason I want to hear your opinion. I have known you for more than three years. I certainly know what kind of person Sona Citri is. Naruto offered the Citri's heiress a small smile. Go ahead, let me hear your plan. Then, Rias breathed a relief air out of her lungs, feeling glad that finally the shithead of the Phoenix clan had left for good. Indeed she had been told that the bastard would come in less than a month, but she did not expect it to be so soon. She was just studying in her class back then but the sudden appearance of familiar demonic energy forced her to abandon her class, she was forced to have conversation with that bastard for hours. Still, at least we have ten days to prepare. Akino offered her a calming smile, of which she returned faintly, I am quite confident, added Akino which later followed by a fufufu laugh, there's no doubt that her queen had some breakthrough in her not-so-secret training. Bucko, please help me to be strong. I want to smack that chickenhead bastard and pummel him to the fucking ground. How dare of him to plan having your awesome big boobs for himself. Unforgivable. Please, bucko, teach me. I I want to help as well, muttered Asia meekly, she was good only at healing, so she was not confident that she could be much helpful to others, nevertheless, her desire to help was real, so were Kaneko and Kiba. Rias allowed herself to smile, they wanted to help her, they wanted to protect her heart, she was lucky to have them as her peerage, was she not? There was also Gasper. Even though he was not yet ready to join them, he was of a kind-hearted soul as well. I am so happy to. Rhea's voice was interrupted by the sudden knock on the door, and the door opened even before the owner managed to utter a single word, Sona, and Uzumaki Naruto. Sorry to suddenly pay you a visit, Rias, but I have a proposal that is helpful to your cause, is it alright to speak here at this very moment? It is fine for your peerage to listen. Rias didn't expect Sona to suddenly come with her knight as well as her crush, perhaps, well, it was understandable that Sona was worried, but it was not, Rias didn't see any worries on her face, nor was there panic, Sona had come for a serious matter which had no worries in it, 
and since it was for her cause, it was natural the proposal had something to do with that shithead of Fenix clan. Have a seat, she said, motioning her right index finger toward empty seats, of which Sona and Naruto followed naturally, and Uzumaki-san. This is the first time you meet my peerage member. Let me introduce them. Rias then introduced her peerages one by one. Each of them nodded their heads greeting the blonde. I have another one, but he can't join us at the moment, and Issei. Please keep your question for now, I will explain it later. I understand, Bucko. Nice to see you too, guys, my name, I think you have heard it, is Uzumaki Naruto, since I start to join Sona recently, I hope we can treat each other well. Naruto offered them his warm smile, your peerages are full of interesting people, Gremory, they have potential, you will seriously be a threat in the rating games in the future. In the future, huh? Fufufu. I expect nothing less from the rumored to be the strongest knight in Underworld. I heard that Tsubaki learned a thing or two about sword from you, can I have your precious time to teach me swordmanship, Uzumaki-san. Rias held herself from bursting in laugh, the twitch at the corner of Sona's lips and eye were seen clearly, she guessed right, Sona was in love with her knight, she had a good blackmail material now. Era era, perhaps I should ask Kaichu's permission first? Himejima Akino-san, said Sona while adjusting her glasses, please understand that Naruto is busy. He is new in this human world, there are a many things that I have to show him. By that, does Kaichu mean a place to date, Uzumaki-san? Now, now, Akino, don't go overboard, Sona is not here to be teased by you. She has a proposal to offer to me, right, Sona? Sona adjusted her glasses, secretly calming herself down. I will not forget this moment, Akino-san, muttered Sona in a whisper, low enough that it's hard to tell what she said without reading her mouth. So, Sona continued while gazing seriously at Rhea's eyes, the proposal I am offering you is about my peerage and I switch place with yours in facing Razor and his peerage, in short, I take your place. If she said that she expected that much, it would be a brutal lie, she didn't even imagine about it, it surprised her, the rest of her peerages were surprised as well, no one expected the student council president would say such thing. If you agree, Sona continued, Tonight I will return to Underworld and schedule a meeting with Razor and his family, I will enact an agreement with them, should we lose, you and I will marry him, but, should we win, the marriage is to be cancelled, knowing Razor, he would jump to the agreement without thinking twice, after all, public know not of who the strongest knight is, they just know about the Yellow Knight nickname, save for a number of people, what do you think? It was one hell of a sweet proposal, it was a hundred percent lost for Razor, moreover, Sona wouldn't offer herself if she doubt even a bit that they would lose, however, despite the sweetness the proposal offered, Rias wouldn't bite it without confirmation. What is it for you in return? There's no way Sona would do that for free, they're indeed friends, childhood friends, close friends, but, there's no way in hell that Sona would help her for free, after all, what she's offering was not small, it was not about the previous free kindness she offered, this new level of favor. I want you to convince your father, Lord Gremory, to write official letter about supporting me in creating a new big school in the underworld. I will discuss the details with your father. That is assuming you agree with my proposal. That is no problem. Exclaimed Rias, even without my help, he will naturally support you. I know about that, but just in case, are you sure just that? Rias threw another question, this time with a more serious face. I have no problem with giving you anything as long as it is within my capacity. It is enough. Beside, my true intention is to get support from Fenix clan. I will force them to do the same thing I ask of your father should rise or lose, and he will lose, also, it will not be helping you if I ask for more. They talked for a couple more minutes before agreeing with the proposal, after that, Sona and her knight left the room, not even a minute after that, Issei threw upon them questions after questions. With the real Naruto sixth path Senjutsu was truly magnificent, it allowed him to be in harmony with nature, it calmed his mind to the point like he was in the everlasting meditation position, and the more important one, it allowed him to fully grasp his power. Things he couldn't do beforehand were now become a possibility, not only could he use all basic elements, sub-elements were within his reach as well, by understanding how his truth seeker orbs formed, Naruto could combine his element into three or four, using wood style, an element unique to first Hokage, was no problem at all, really. Naruto had no words to describe Sixth Path's Senjutsu other than truly magnificent. However, no matter how truly magnificent Sixth Path's Senjutsu was, it had limit, it was similar to a container filled with water, 
If the water was taken without a pause, surely it would be empty. So was six paths senjutsu. Once it empty, it would take times to fill it back. How long? Naruto had not yet figured it out, but at least it was no more than a whole day. If with normal senjutsu Naruto could just take the energy from nature, sixth path senjutsu was different. The chakra was stored inside him like a container, he couldn't absorb it from nature, simply put, it was his second chakra, it was similar to normal chakra, it would be filled by itself when it's lessened or emptied. Perhaps I should learn the actual senjutsu, muttered Naruto as he left his artificial dimension. When Naruto stepped out of the hole connecting his dimension in the student council room, what welcomed him was Genshiro Saji himself, there's no one else around. The clock pointed that the school had ended about a half hour earlier, it meant that the other members were still doing their job, his clone, the one he left in the room, was not there, he had sent it to meet Sona as soon as the clone attending the class returned his memories to him. Senpei, may I see your sacred gear? Naruto blinked at the sudden question. But, remembering Tsubaki's words yesterday, it became apparently clear. Genshiro Saji was in love with Sona, he was reincarnated with four pawns, he believed himself to be strong enough to be with Sona, the confident was further strengthened by his rather strong sacred gears, so, when suddenly he met another Sona's peerage that was stronger than him, his reaction was natural, and, comparing his expression at the moment to yesterday, it seemed he had become calmer and accepting, Tsubaki did a splendid job talking to the blonde. Do you want to confirm whether it is true that my sacred gear is stronger than yours? Naruto asked as he walked and sat up on the sofa right in front of the second year student. Yes, admitted Saji, I have heard many things about you from Tsubaki Senpei, from the fact that you were Kaichu's very first peerage to the very fact that Kaichu bores love for you, I know about all of it, Senpei, I have experienced how much energy you have, so, for me to let you become a man that Kaichu can rely on, I have to see for myself how superior your sacred gear is. Okay, there was a single point where Naruto couldn't follow. Sona, loved him. What was the kid blurting out? Was it, true? Did Sona really? Honestly, Naruto didn't know how to react, however, remembering every moment he spent with Sona, it was hard to deny what Saji had just said. Moreover, Sona insisted they lived in the same apartment, if that was not due to love, then, what? It could be argued that she viewed him as real family, but, was that really the case? Naruto wanted to say yes, but his heart screamed no. Tsubaki told me that you have a crush on Sona, Naruto said after a while, are you fine with giving up so easily? Ha ha ha, you were being funny, senpei, do you think there's a man who will give up so easily toward a woman they deeply love? There is none. Any man will do anything for their woman, giving up is not an option, but, what can we do if the woman we love already set her eyes on someone way better than us? Naruto saw how frustrated Saji was, but he did not comment. The smile Kaichu gave me and the one she gave you, anyone can tell that I stand no chance. Do you know what Tsubaki Senpei told me? Saji continued, but didn't wait for response. I will not forgive you if you let your feeling grows deeper. She said that with a face so serious that I can't offer any words to retort. Forget your love for Kaichu, you will only hurt yourself. That time is the first time that I know how it feels to have your heart broken. So, Senpei, please help me, let me see your sacred gear. Saji's love for Sona was genuine, Naruto could see that, remembering his old days when he was craving for Sakura's attention, Naruto understood that his naivety back then was not something deserved to be called love, he was just looking for attention, mainly due to his jealousy toward that bastard Uchiha, and a little loneliness, perhaps. As a man, the only response to give was showing what Saji wanted to see, that's a form of respect toward the blonde. However, the meaning behind that was not something trivial, by showing what Saji wanted to see, it was the same as admitting that he'd be a man Sona could rely on, that was not something Naruto could do, sure, he had no problem helping the sea tree's heiress, he had planned to be of help to her to begin with, but, he would eventually leave the world. Even so, alright, Naruto couldn't help it, numerous golden ripples rifted the space inside the student council room, from the corner to another corner, golden ripples filled the space, the number easily exceeded a thousand, from within each of them, a tip of weapon showed itself, swords, spears, axes, and more, and all of them were not normal in nature, some were shrouded by holy aura, some gave of evil aura, some radiated divine aura, and a couple of them smelled dragon. Genshiru, I can reign this whole city with weapons, this is my sacred gear, gate of Babylon. Somewhere in Iraq, Tower of Babel, 
Bible said that was the reason the Lord scattered human from their union. However, what unknown to majority of human was that the tower was meant as declaration of war from Mesopotamian pantheon to the biblical pantheon, though, biblical God ignored the provocation, he even used that as a reason to divide human from unity, human who at the very beginning spoke the same language, they became scattered with many languages, that is the answer to the question why are there many languages in the world. Upon realizing their plan failed miserably, gods, goddesses of Mesopotamian pantheon decided to bring the tower into their divine dimension, they left a cheap imitation of it to remind the human of the event, they then proceeded to help the Sumerian queen, Semiramis, to build another art which would gather the biblical god's attention, that art was known as Hanging Garden of Babylon, a place that once called heaven on earth, the garden that was floating in the sky. However, their attempt resulted with another failure, biblical god's attention was focused solely on his own pantheon, toward the other's pantheons, he took a neutral approach, it was not wrong to say that he was a pacifist, the war the Mesopotamian pantheon wanted was forever remained a wish, so, just like the Tower of Babel, the Hanging Garden of Babylon was brought into their divine dimension, leaving only the cheap and poor imitation behind. At the top of the ruin of the Great Hanging Garden of Babylon, the cheap imitation that is left in the human world, an androgynous green-haired being who was sitting in a lotus position opened his eyes in surprise. What is it, Enkidu? That question came from a black hair pointed earswoman who was sitting upon a magnificent throne. A throne that was not a part of ruin of the cheap imitation of the hanging garden of Babylon. My heavenly chains resonate in me, this feeling, it is similar to that time, there is someone who has my chains, quite far in the east. I can sense it, Gil, no, rather, someone who has connection to Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh is dead, before Tiamat resurrected you, I witnessed her calling upon Gilgamesh's soul. Unlike me who quickly pledged my loyalty to the primordial goddess, Gilgamesh refused. Tiamat destroyed his soul that it would be impossible for his existence to remain in the world. Therefore, I see no reason that has something to do with Gilgamesh, however, if there is another heavenly chains. Are you implying the remnant of that Gilgamesh I feel is not from this world, a parallel world? Perhaps, but, it will not be impossible for biblical God to have created something like your heavenly chains, Gilgamesh used your chain after your death so it is likely the new heavenly chains contains a small portion of Gilgamesh's essence, he was the one who blessed human with sacred gear after all, well, you can try getting the answer by yourself, the east, isn't it? Enkidu closed his eyes, ignoring the last question of Semiramis. What is this about? Did you just speak about that arrogant bastard who already dead for good? Ishtar, refrain yourself from insulting Gil, he is my one and only best friend, Enkidu threatened without opening his eyes, Mother will not mind it if I discipline you for good reason. Why are you coming here, Ishtar? Questioned Semiramis before the goddess of beauty, good harvest, war, lust, discord and fertility, could manage to retort toward Enkidu's insolent threat. Didn't Ereshkigal forbid you from leaving the netherworld? HMPH, escaping the netherworld is child play for a goddess as great as me. Well, it is not like I blackmailed one of her servant to forcefully allow. EHEM. Nevertheless, that is not important, I will ignore your previous nonsense, Enkidu, so tell me what were you talking about? It has something to do with Gilgamesh, has it not? True that the Rere barriers surrounded the inner circle of Kyoto, one couldn't just teleport it inside with ease, there's precaution installed into the barriers, if someone sneaked in forcefully, the people responsible of the barriers would naturally know, yet, it didn't bother Naruto, he appeared on the rooftop of the palace where Yusaka resided in with no worries whatsoever. A few seconds afterward, a man with a horn on the middle of his forehead flashed in front of the blonde, Karama-sama has sent me to welcome you, Uzumaki Dono. Naruto raised his eyebrows in surprise, Yukai were prideful, they wouldn't add Sama as honorific to the people that were not their gods, leaders, important elders, yet, for some reason the Yukai before him addressed Karama as such. It seems so, Naruto replied calmly, follow me, please, Karama-sama doesn't like waiting. So, Naruto followed the Yukai inside the palace, and, things were different than before. Naruto had visited Yusaka with Seraphal, so he knew how the palace was, but, what his eyes seeing were nothing like that time, and the most glaring thing, Kurama was sitting joyously on the throne right at the middle corner of the room with his fluffy nine tails waving lazily, the throne was not there yesterday night. Welcome, Naruto, now kneel, pay a proper respect to the supreme king of Yukai. Naruto couldn't formulate words to say, 
Speechless for a few moments, he remembered that it was just yesterday night that he summoned Karama and asked him to lay hand on Leyline, and now, it's true that the method were not matter as long as it brought no harm into the innocent, but taking over the Yukai, really? Karama, said Naruto as he walked, shortening the distance between them, explain to me, or I'll have no choice but to recall you to your place. Watch your tone, Naruto. I am now a king. I don't like to be disrespected. Karama paused for a moment, frowning. You seem to be stronger. Is that why you seem confident, thinking now you can beat me in a fair fight? Karama. Twelve black orbs appeared behind Naruto's back. I don't want to force you, but if you ask for it. Karama growled, annoyed, but he understood what he witnessed. Naruto had gotten his hand on Asura's power. He didn't know how the blonde did that, but his eyes didn't see illusion. If he fought him, Karama would lose. True that he could use ley lines to strengthen himself, but that was not enough, unless he used all of its energy. Besides, there's no point fighting the blonde. They're on the same side, only with different purpose. While Naruto wanted to return to their old world, Karama wanted to take back his other half. Also, he didn't mean to say that all, he just got in the mood to say that, even though he would never admit it, he started to respect the blonde. Fine, said Karama, pretending to be annoyed, you, he said to one of the yukai available, go get me Yasaka. Yes, my lord, Naruto sighed as he let go of six paths senjutsu, it's good that Karama didn't force his hand, he didn't want to harass the beast, regardless, the situation was not good. If Karama was really doing what he thought he's doing, it was just about time for Shinto Pantheon to react, and Naruto knew for sure that Karama wouldn't bow his head to the deities, conflict couldn't be avoided, there are only two options available. Shinto Pantheon became a part of Karama's people, or, Shinto Pantheon became an enemy of Karama. Knowing Karama, the arrogant beast was confident that he alone could take down all the big names the Pantheon could offer and it was undeniably true, Karama was strong, he could take them, however, taking the whole pantheon would be another story entirely, the strongest god, Shiva, perhaps might be able to do that, but Karama would end up losing should he face the entire pantheon. Admittedly, Karama was no stupid beast, contrary to it, he was smart, he knew what he's doing, and Naruto understood that very much, yet, it didn't stop him from worrying, after all, things tended to go wrong, even though Karama knew what he's doing, no one could guarantee that he'd be careful, besides, he didn't need ley lines anymore. Karama. What is so important that you? Era, Naruto-kun. How nice to be able to see you again so soon. Yusaka. Karama called before Naruto could say anything. He said it in kingly voice. Explain to Naruto why I am sitting on this throne. I am a king. Explaining a simple thing over and over again is not something I must do. If you do that, I will allow you three days off to spend with your daughter before you start your new role as my prime minister. Three hours after Sona's arrival, Underworld, Sona finally left the Phoenix Mansion after spending time more than two hours in there, one and a half hour was spent for waiting, she came without being invited after all, she had to bear with it, the rest was spent talking and persuading to reach a deal, the result was naturally as how she wanted it to be, the rating game will be held in a week. Sona didn't accompanied by anyone, her sister did offer force, to be precise, her to be accompanied by her wholesome self, even her father did try to come along, however, Sona refused them, this was her business, she could handle it by herself, besides, she's an adult already, an adult handled their problem by themselves. At least, that's what she believed, but the feeling she felt at the moment was precisely the presence of Seraphal, she had tailed her, and she started to believe that the reason Lord Fenix appeared after one and a half hour of waiting was due to Seraphal's intervention, she was not important enough for the head of Fenix clan to leave his job and met her. Sona felt the urge to call out to her sister, saying that she knew she was there, however, she held herself back, she didn't have a younger sister, so she couldn't fully understand what it felt like, but, she understood why Seraphal did what she did, it would be bad of her if she called her out. Let's pretend I don't notice, shrugging, Sona casted a teleportation magic circle, returning back to the sea tree mansion, a dozen seconds after her arrival, Seraphal ran toward her with energetic smile fully displayed on her face, since there was no one around, Sona allowed Seraphal to hug her, damn, her breasts are something else, and she is shorter than me. Such jealousy found its place inside her head when their body pressed each other. So, how was it? Asked Seraphal, pretending she didn't know, did you manage to secure a deal? Yeah, Sona nodded her head, as how I want it to be, the rating game will be held in a week, 
You can tell father that he can bet on me, he is guaranteed to win. Excellent. Now then, let's go to sleep. You can hug your beloved big sister like you always do when you're still a kid. Oh, right, we should take a bath first. As much as I want to spend time with you, I need to return to the human world, sister. I see, all right, perhaps some other time I will stay the night and we can spend the time together, for now, please tell our parents that I am leaving. Seeing Seraphal nodding her head, Sona decided to leave immediately. Three hours had passed since she left the blonde, she wondered if he's waiting her. When she appeared in their apartment through teleportation magic circle, her eyes found the blonde sleeping on their couch, smile crawled its way on her face. Her legs were already moving to reach him, she bent forward, positioning her face slightly above him, looking at that face, it tempted Sona to land a kiss. Oh girl, she really did that, and on his lips, too. I see, at the moment you can only use one of your sacred gears at a time, Naruto said after witnessing what Saji could do with his sacred gear, while the abilities of your sacred gears are impressive, at the moment you lack control over your demonic power and physical strength to utilize it to the fullest. Yeah. Kaichu and Tsubaki Senpei said I need to work on my stamina and physical strength. Naruto nodded his head. Good that you acknowledge it, however, we're not going to start with that, for the first four days, you will work to control your demonic power and utilize each of your sacred gears, only after that we can work on your physical prowess, for today, you will focus on, blaze black flare, by the end of the day, I want you to be able to fire your black flame as easy as flipping your hand. Then I will be in your care, Senpei, please don't go easy on me, I want to be strong too so that I can help Kaichu and protect the others. Naruto smiled, that's the spirit. Then, Saji, I will start attacking you with many small fireballs, numerous orange magic circles appeared on Naruto's right and left side, your goal is to protect yourself from my small fireballs by burning it with your black flame, now, here I go. Sona didn't lift a single finger, but Rias' peerage was down already, the only one left standing was Rias herself, on her side, only Rea and Momo were down, Akino and Yuto simultaneously defeated those two, Yuto was defeated right after that by Tsubasa, while Akino fell by the hand of Tsubaki after her queen managed to force Kaneko to surrender. While the fight between Akino and Tsubaki was interesting, more so with all the lightning Akino created, there was a big disappointment in the form of Hyodo Issei, he hold, boosted gear, one of the Longinus, yet he was nothing but annoyance in this practice, his perverted nature was out of the world, he was fainted after Ruruko accidentally touched his manhood, and he was still unconscious with his thing pointed upward, thanks to Asia who was covering the pervert from the other's eyes, otherwise Sona would have buried him into the earth. To be honest, his thing's rather average, it was almost twice smaller than Naruto's size that she saw in her previous dream, a naughty dre. Sona widened her eyes in both horror and embarrassment, her face was already colored in pink. Damn that dream, cursed Sona inside her head, no, it was not because she hated it, damn no. Sona would happily embrace that dream if it decided to delude her mind again, she cursed the dream because it made her stared at Naruto more often, and that she was curious to find out whether the dream held any truth. The feeling in the dream was full of ecstasy. Will it be the same in the real world? Oh, girl. Sona was ashamed to admit that she felt hot down there. All these embarrassing things would not dominate her mind if she had not kissed the blonde last night. Oh, for the devil's sake. Sona really, really hoped that the blonde didn't feel the kiss. Otherwise, she'd like to die just to erase the embarrassment. On the bright side, it proved that she was a normal healthy girl. Unlike her big sister. Yeah. That was the solace she could take at the moment. Kaichu, your face is red, Tsubaki stated. I will not ask why, but you may want to give Rias-san a response, she wishes to face you one on one. Sona blinked twice, it is not, she said replying Tsubaki's first sentence. All right, I accept her challenge, you can rest, Tsubaki. With that, Sona stood a few meters before the crimson-haired devil. I didn't expect your peerage to be so strong, Sona and I certainly didn't think that one of your peerages would take advantage of my pawn's perverted nature, but, alas, today I learned that we have to use everything in order to win, we have to do everything in order to defeat our opponent. I am sure that Ruruko didn't plan to do that. It was purely accident, Sona shook her head, nevertheless, let's get this over with, come, Rias, give me your all. Don't hesitate, or you'll end up embarrassing yourself. Hey, the last time we fought, I show you who the boss was, have your confident deludes your mind into thinking that you can beat me? Sona sighed, 
They both knew that Rias was just trying to boost her confidence. Besides, their last fight happened when they were twelfth. Things were different now. Nevertheless, Sona said nothing and motioned the Gremory heiress to attack her. Rias didn't wait for another provocation. Her power of destruction came to life. Small orbs of dark energy shrouded by crimson aura appeared around her. That orb would turn all things into ashes, or so they said, but Sona knew that was not the truth. Indeed it could do that, but depending on someone's strength, resisting the power of destruction was not impossible. After all, it was still made of demonic energy. After all, if power of destruction could reduce everything into ashes, why was Sirzek Lucifer not the strongest being in the world? Here I go. Sona blasted the orbs of power of destruction with her concentrated demonic energy, it caused the ground to shatter, and Rias to widen her eyes in surprise, the orbs of power of destruction didn't get destroyed, it were pushed, Rias could still launch it back towards Sona, however, Sona was no longer standing at the crack on the ground, she was already behind Rias with dozen hundreds water bullets. You need to train seriously, Rias, or you will never get the chance to claim rating game championship, after all. I am the one who will sit at the very top, you are talented, and you have more demonic energy than I. But, as of now, you're wasting your potential, learn from this defeat. Seven days later, Underworld, the day had finally come, Naruto found himself standing next to Sona and her peerage inside a large arena, waiting to be teleported into the raiding game arena. Before them stood Riser Phoenix and his peerage. They were all wearing confident face, looking down on their opponent, their arrogance was something else but that's to be expected from young devil coming from elite family. Naruto sighed inwardly, didn't understand why he didn't use a clone to take his place, he knew Ajuka, he was his student after all, it was not difficult to fool the rating game system so that it would read his clone as himself despite not having evil peace inside, however, here he found himself in his real body, oh, well, it was too late to change his mind, people would notice if he started to change place with a clone. Having a smart wife isn't bad at all, I like to collect different type of woman, you and Rias, I am sure I'd be happy having you joining my harem, that stoic face you have, I wonder what kind of expression you have when we play together on my bed. Naruto didn't want to show off in front of the whole devil society, or even the whole supernatural world, it was better for his strength to be hidden, however, he changed his mind, hearing how smugly Riser vomited those words, knowing how disgusting the words he uttered, Naruto had to admit he felt annoyed so annoyed that he felt glad he was here. Sona, I am sorry to be this selfish, whispered Naruto, but his voice was loud enough to be heard by all the devils inside arena. But let me handle this little devil, have Subaki by your side. Let Saji become the main piece for you to destroy his pieces, we will let the devil society know that you were first in line to win rating game championship. Riser face was distorted in fury, but contrary to him, a beautiful smile graced Sona's lips, you are my knights, she said. Indeed I am, and the scenery suddenly changed into that of the hot desert, the raiding game had just begun. It was plain desert, no single tree to be found, a truly plain, flat desert, with sand hills surrounding them, it was like an arena, or, in this case, a chessboard, the pieces would be moved to take down the other pieces, an open battle, unlike many more raiding games where they needed to protect their flag or something similar, there are no places to hide. Raiding game. Begin. Rating game system's voice echoed, and it followed by Riser's voice as he ordered his peerage to move and cut the distance between them, destroy that blonde bastard. Naruto didn't pay attention to the women that were closing to him, in a blink of an eye, he was already behind them all. In between them and Riser, who was standing in between two women, he heard Sona giving orders to Saji and others. The fight had just begun among the peerages, and just in a few mere seconds, the rating game systems announced two of Riser's pawns had been defeated. Are you not going to attack? Asked Naruto as a few golden ripple patterns appeared on both his sides. I will allow you as much time as you need, it is fine with the three of you attacking me at once. Riser's face shrouded in anger, he ordered his queen to attack, and the queen moved in a heartbeat, but Naruto only launched three identical swords as response. The swords were moving at supersonic level of speed, they were too fast for the queen to avoid while she was running towards Naruto's direction, however, her reaction speed was good, she managed to protect her vital part from being pierced. Unfortunately for the queen, Naruto was not so full of himself like Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh didn't bother to master all the weapons inside his treasury, that blonde king only bothered to master powerful weapons. Naruto learned to master as much weapons as he could, 
But even with the help of shadow clones, he had not yet mastered them all. Naruto estimated that he had mastered a fifth of total weapons, but that was more than enough. He had no time to use all the swords at once anyway. That's why, before the queen managed to take the swords from her body, each swords released a stream of lightning that caused the queen to scream in agony. It surprised Riser and even brought worry to the ever calm young woman beside the phoenix, and, before anyone could say anything, the queen disappeared from the arena as the rating game system announced her defeat, the swords turned into golden particle and disappeared as well. Just to tell you, all of my weapons are not normal, there are holy swords among them, be careful not to be hit. Don't be so full of yourself, trash. Just because you managed to defeat my queen effortlessly doesn't mean you can do the same to me. Growled Razor as he stepped forward with flame wings appeared on his back, go help others, Ravel. I will kill this imbecile by myself. Very well, Onisama, but please be careful, he is, strong, don't let your guar do. Ravel failed to finish her words, a sword had pierced her heart from her back, she disappeared a second after as the rating game system announced her defeat. Lesson number one. Do not let your guard down while in the presence of an enemy, Naruto said as he raised right index finger. Just because you ask her to leave, it doesn't mean ill allow it, now then, shall we? There's no verbal response from Razor, but there's no need, his anger had gone beyond its limit. The heir of Phoenix clan launched numerous fireballs as his body covered by flame, however, Naruto was not impressed. While the mon's control over flame exceeded that of Sasuke's, the speed and its power were lacking, but then again, Sasuke's jutsu was great fireball, not fireball. Naruto's very own fireballs met head-on with the Phoenix airs, the golden ripple on both his sides disappeared. Sona shifted her eyes from Naruto to Saji as she heard rating game system announced another defeat of Riser's pawns, while not yet as strong as Tsubaki, Saji had become stronger than her other pieces, but that's to be expected, he had four sacred gears, Naruto personally taught him, it would be questionable if he didn't significantly improve, Saji alone had defeated all pawns of Riser. Saji was not the only one to be praised, Subasa and Tomo were on the way of winning as well, so were Reya, even Momo and Ruruko managed to corner both of Riser's knights, Sona was overall pleased, they needed way more training and experienced in order to compete with the likes of Dehauser Belil's peerage, but for a newbie they're good. Don't. Saji. Yelled Sona as she watched Saji run toward Tomo, let them finish their fight, this is a raiding game, no one will die. Allowing them to finish their fight is essential for their growth, come here, you can go should one of them fail, which I doubt they will. Rias had to admit that she was jealous at her childhood friend, she admitted that Sona was the smarter of the two, and she had no problem with it, but, she should be the stronger between them, yet, their battle a week ago said otherwise, Sona was no longer her rival. That childhood friend of hers was a level above her, a giant level, while she was walking these years, Shona was running. Watching the sea tree's peerage's performance was enough to tell her that she was lacking behind even in ambition, it is no wonder that she said those words, muttered the crimson-haired devil as she recalled their friendly battle, I should reduce my time watching anime. Lord Fenix was furious as he stood before the most genius devil in existence, he didn't bother to continue watching his son's rating game, he had already understood the outcome of the match when his eyes found the whiskered blonde devil among sea tree's peerage, that reincarnated devil was no ordinary devil. He was a low-class devil only in status. That knight of Sona Citri was a Jukas only student, there era even a rumor mentioning a new knight defeating Sirzek's knight in a duel, which automatically made him the strongest knight. It was not a coincidence that a Jukas student was also a knight, it could be no one else but that boy, he must the knight the rumor talking about, after all, even though he was a young human and new to the devil society, he was the genius student, a Juka had never taken a student, anyone with a healthy brain could connect the dot. I didn't know that your student is the member of Citri Eris Peerage, he said as calm as he could, he was a lord of a noble clan, but the man before him was a Satan, and one of their two strongest devils, despite how furious he was, Lord Fenix knew not to cross the line, don't you think it is not fair for my son's peerage? Not fair to your son or to you. Ajuka didn't wait for the elder devil, I heard that you made a deal with Seraphal's sister, your son's lose is equal to your lose, is that why you come to me, Lord Fenix? Never mind, Lord Fenix stated flatly, I will leave you on your own, Lord Ajuka. Oh, yes, thank you for coming, as the Lord of the Fenix clan left his room which was the operating room of raiding game, which was one of many room that connected to the arena. 
Ajuka returned his eyes back to the screen that showed his student humoring the Phoenix's heir. Of course normally he wouldn't be here. He had people ensuring that there would be no problem as the raiding games took place. But, today was different, his student was there, and Ajuka was dying to wait for this day to come. The reason was simple, there's life inside Naruto that didn't belong to the blonde, it was not sacred gear. The blonde's sacred gear was a key that unlocked a vast treasury that contained weapons, food, drink, and many others. That life he felt when he was training the blonde was devilish in nature. Ajuka couldn't grasp it in normal situation, but it would be different in raiding game world. Yet, even at this moment there's no indication about that life, his system didn't give him his desire. Was it perhaps his delusion, hallucination, or, there was something abnormal that even his system couldn't detect? Speaking from human language, Ajuka was a man of science, he trusted his creation. It was unlikely that his system failed to detect it, then, was he indeed having delusion? Naruto's life force was great for a former human, perhaps that life he felt was the effect of Naruto's shadow clone? Hum, it can be a good explanation, but I will observe until the end of this game just in case. Riser couldn't believe that he, a member of Fenix clan, was struggling against a reincarnated devil in using the very element his clan was famous for, yet, he was not in a dream, that blonde bastard faced him using fire magic, the very magic he excelled at, and he was not winning their contest, they had thrown fireballs toward each other for a few minutes, and Rise was losing. Insolent bastard! Yelled Riser in fury, don't get ahead of yourself. I will show you the true power of a phoenix. As the voice left his mouth, Riser used wind to enhance his flame, in all sudden, his fireball grew in size and speed, for a second it started to overpower his enemy's fireballs. However, before another second passed, a stream of flame engulfed all of his attack at once, it was large and fast, forcing the heir of the Phoenix clan to fly. Of course he could take it head on, but he didn't want to be the first to receive a hit, it didn't matter that he was immortal. The point, taking the first hit would hurt his pride, that reincarnated devil was that annoying. Riser's eyes widened in surprise as he witnessed the sea of flame covered a large area, large enough that it started burning the sand hill. Moreover, the flame was, breathed by the reincarnated devil, he breathed it. Even a phoenix like him couldn't breathe fire, yet, that bastard, he did it like a dragon. You, just, just who the hell are you? Right a second after he shouted out that question, Raiding Game System announced the defeat of his last peerage member, thus leaving him alone in this arena. Well, time for play is over, said the blonde, not bothering to answer his damn question. This is the end. You will suffer until your demonic power no longer able to keep you regenerate or that you give up. Razor had not the time to snort at the lowly devil beneath him. His eyes widened in fear as golden rippled appeared basically everywhere. Tips of weapons came out of all the ripples, which he couldn't count anymore. And, in less than a second, hundreds upon hundreds weapons launched itself toward the brown-haired devil, let alone to escape. Riser had not the time to curse as the holy swords pierced his body. There's no other way to escape except using teleportation. However, teleportation was not an instant type of spell. Preparation was needed, but the time he did not have. Riser suffered under the sharp steel of swords and spears, and all of them were holy type of weapons. His scream was the only noise to accompany the rain of the weapons. Brutal, merciless, those two words were the right one to use to describe the defeat of his son as the Lord of the Phoenix House listened to the rating game system announcing the winner, he had just returned back to the spectators' seats on the arena when the screens showed the holy weapons showering his son, it was five minutes ago, and now he was staring at the sea tree's heiress peerage as Seraphal and Sirzek congratulated them. Darling, are you alright? Let us see Riser, those weapons must have left so much pain in his brain. That reincarnated devil doesn't look like a cruel person, but his treatment to our son was cruel. Lord Fenix shifted his eyes toward his wife, before finally nodding his head and said, he punished Razor for his earlier words toward Citri. I, too, will punish anyone that dares say such nonsense about you right before my face. Karama rested his cheek on his right palm as a well-known deity stepped into his throne room, he didn't bother to stand from his seat, nor did he bother to show respect, he was the supreme king. A day he bowed his head would never come, it didn't matter that the deity standing before him was the Amaterasu herself, even if the destroyer god Shiva took Amaterasu's place would not change a thing, the only one he would bow his head to was the old man Hagoromo. So you are the strongest Yukai that has taken Yusaka's leadership. Karama the Nine Tails, Amaterasu didn't wait for any response, 
It is an agreement between us that Kyoto Yukai worship Shinto deities and Shinto deities protect Yukai. This agreement has begun even before Yusaka took the mantle of leadership. I understand that according to Kyoto Yukai's culture, the strongest nine tails shall be put as the facto leader, however, the agreement between us can't be changed just because there's a change in leadership. It is true, the agreement can't be changed just because I will it. Kurama decided to humor the Shinto pantheon's chief by agreeing to her statement, after all, it was true, despite how full of himself Kurama was, he respected an agreement, as long as it was a mutual one. Then, however, continued Kurama, cutting the sun goddess words without any sympathy, I find that the Shinto pantheon failed to fulfill the agreement, you're supposed to protect Yukai that has affiliation with inner Kyoto, yet, I heard a few Yukai were killed by other faction, mostly devil and fallen angel, in the very land of yours, not to mention about the extinction of Nekosho race. Amaterasu frowned, Shinto pantheon is no Hindu pantheon. She stressed, we're not capable of solving everything with power alone. You have to understand that if we punish the fallen angel, they will treat it as a declaration of war. Facing Grigori is certainly not a problem, we can destroy them anytime, however, fallen angel is a part of biblical faction, angel and devil, despite having problem with fallen angel, they'd not stand still seeing Grigori get destroyed. Shinto Pantheon can't win against the whole biblical faction, not to mention that two of them are listed in top ten strongest beings. Kurama raised an eyebrow, not toward the sun goddess whole reason, but at the mention of top ten strongest beings. Living inside Naruto in Underworld for a few years, Kurama knew about the so-called top ten strongest beings, excluding Ophis and Great Red, whom Kurama assumed as the equivalent of Jubi. Shiva the Destroyer stood at the very top, all mythologies put him at the pinnacle of strength, but, number two and the rest were not the same. Each mythology had different name in the top ten under Shiva. After all, they couldn't decide how strong someone really was unless they fought each other. They based it on their fights which were recorded in history in their legend. Shiva stood at the pinnacle of strength because in all these years, no one could really challenge him. His legend alone was enough to enthrone him as the strongest being excluding infinite dragon god and true dragon. For new devil faction, it was like this, Shiva, Visnu, Brahma, Indra, Lu, Typhon, Fenrir, Sirzek, Ajuka, Hades, Naruto was supposed to replace Hades, but they didn't put his name for the obvious reason. Tell me your pantheon version of top 10, muttered Kurama after a minute of silence. Shiva, primordial goddess Tiamat, Visnu, Brahma, Amun-Ra, Indra, Thor, Fenrir, Sirzek, Ajuka, Amaterasu listed the name, and then she started thinking, before continuing, Hades and Typhon probably can be listed in top 10, but we believe Sirzek Lucifer and Ajuka Beelzebub deserve the spots more than those two. Kurama noted that there are a clear differences in their list compared to the Devil's version, the most notorious one was primordial goddess Tiamat taking over Visnu position, there was Amun-Ra droving Indra to the sixth place, Fenrir was noted to be as strong as the heavenly dragons, meaning that Sirzek and Ajuka were still not at the level of Diedrich and Albion, however, it was just based on assumption. In term of power, Kurama believed that heavenly dragons were around the same level as Gyuki. The eight tails, he could handle all of his siblings at once, of course it was him at full strength, but at the moment, probably four or five biju at once was his limit, meaning, his strength, compared to the top ten strongest being, stood slightly below Indra, the god of war who could handle both heavenly dragons at once. Then, how strong are you compared to Fenrir? Kurama believed he could beat both Sirzek and Ajuka at once, thus he didn't bother asking about them, is it possible for you to subdue it? Kurama had heard about Izanagi and Izanami, they should be stronger than Amaterasu herself or her siblings, Izanami was ruling the land of Yomi, Izanagi. There's no information about that particular god, he was confident that defeating Amaterasu and her siblings was not hard to do, but what about Izanagi? How truly strong was he? Amaterasu frowned. I do not come to discuss about strength. Are you trying to lull me into answering such question? How imbecile. Let us return back to the topic we just left. Are you trying to break the agreement we have made a long time ago? Kurama chuckled. He was clearly amused at Amaterasu's reaction. It was nice expression. The black-haired beautiful woman clad in black-white kimono did really have nice expression. It is not I who broke the agreement, replied Kurama after a while his face was dead serious, it is you who did it, as the new leader of the Yukai, I have decided that the agreement is no longer a thing, 
Why would my people worship deities who let them die at the hand of the enemy in their very land? Aren't you supposed to protect them? You Shinto pantheon are truly a disappointment. You. How dare you? Watch your tone, woman. Karama growled, but did not wait for any response. Both Kyoto Yukai and Kanto Yukai will not bow their heads to you anymore. I, the Supreme King of Yukai Kingdom, hereby declare that we're no longer a part of your pantheon, and I have no intention of changing my mind, however, we're open to having good relationship with Shinto pantheon. I see, Amaterasu bore unreadable face, so be it, Amaterasu turned around and said while glaring murderously, your existence is the problem, to return peace to our beloved land, our beloved territory, we will end your existence, it'll give you three days to change your mind, should you ignore my mercy, do prepare to face the wrath of Shinto Pantheon. Karama laughed his ass off, Sea Tree Mansion, Underworld. When Sona appeared inside her family mansion, Naruto was petting Seraphal's head softly as the Mao sat comfortably on his lap with eyes closed. It was not a rare occurrence to be honest, like she used to say, Naruto was Seraphal tamer, but still, saying that she was not jealous was a big lie. Sona wanted to take Seraphal's position too. She knew that it was nice to be in Seraphal's place, alas, Sona couldn't voice it out. She could only stare silently at those two, and quickly averting her eyes when people started to notice. Of course her effort was in vain, except for Naruto and Seraphal who were oblivious to Sona's gaze, the rest of her peerages were not, even Saji did notice it, however, none of them said anything, if the woman on Naruto's lap was not the Mao, probably Saji would have said something, but with Seraphal Leviathan at the blonde's lap, they couldn't say anything. And naturally, Sona was oblivious to the fact that her peerages noticed her gaze. Ahem. Faking a cough to gain attention, Sona told them all that they would return to human world in an hour, their student council after all, setting the role for the students to follow was within their job list. While his clone was enjoying teacher's lecture in the classroom, Naruto was thinking a lot about the offer of infinite dragon god, it was tempting, very, for his purpose, that was the golden ticket, yet, even though the shape-shifting dragon god would come to hear the answer in less than three weeks, Naruto had not prepared a solid answer, it was too soon, he planned to stay in this world at least until Sona got half of the devil clan's approval. Should he reject her? Well, admittedly it was too rash, he might not get such offer ever again, besides, Ophis had done half the deed, she had helped him in awakening Asura's power, rejecting was not wise, but, accepting at the time was not plausible, could they delay the time to confront the Great Red? In less than a month was just too soon. Defeating Great Red needed time and preparation, which was not plausible in the short of time. That's right, Naruto decided after a moment of deep thought, it is stupidity to reject such offer, but I will reject it if Ophis doesn't want to delay the time for us to confront Great Red, these people have helped me a lot, I will at least return the favor before leaving. When the thought about returning to elemental nations fully grasped his mind, a new question arose. Why would he want to return? Aside of that was his world, the world where he was born, what else? Obviously the rare people who would miss him, Pervy Sage, Tsunade Ba Chan, Konohamaru, Aruka, perhaps Hinata as well, he also had good relationship with Shikamura, Kiba, and even Neji, Kakashi, would he miss him? Would Sakura? And to be a Hokage, was that truly a dream he wished to fulfill? Naruto shook his head and avoid such thought, it was no use burdening himself with such question, he would think about it when that time came, for now, he could live in this world as he already did. Nodding to himself, Naruto shifted his eyes to a television, a television which was way better than the one existed in Konoha, but, before he managed to stand and switch on the tool, he felt his consciousness being pulled. Naruto didn't try to reject it, hence, now he was face to face with the mighty Nine Tails who was staring at him with a serious face. You didn't allow me to dive into my own consciousness before, what is the problem? What have you done? Did you accidentally kill one of Yusaka's mates? Or, you have done it with her using that body? Or, Shinto Pantheon came knocking on your door? The later, I am really, really not surprised, good, now, come to Kyoto. No, you talk here, tisk, that bastard. Naruto sighed, feeling irritated, that furball had left the mindscape and forced him out of it, he was tempted to force the giant fox back into its jail, but he managed to calm himself after a few minutes, afterward, Naruto disappeared within teleportation magic. N, 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 
N, N, N. Enkidu raised his eyebrow as he watched two exorcists got scammed. One of them looked stupid, a typical muscle head. Another one was different, but she looked quite naive. It was not a surprise that those two got scammed. If they're not exorcist, perhaps he would offer some help. But the exorcists were biblical gods lackey. Enkidu wasn't fond of them. Let them be. Wait. Perhaps he could use them to make his search easier. They're two fools wandering around in this city. After all, it would not be difficult to manipulate them. Indeed he did not know why they're in this town, but it was hardly a problem. Once he got them under his thumb, they would spill it out themselves, wasn't it better than him doing it alone? And so, Enkidu approached those two, inner Kyoto. Yusaka growled angrily at the male Ninetales before her, she didn't think that it would come to this, well, she did think that things might go wrong if she did not consult it with the goddess of the sun, but she did not think that it was to this level. What the fucking hell did Kurama do to make Amaterasu so angry that she declared war on Yukai? What is it, woman? Kurama, who was resting his head on his right palm, raised his left eyebrow at the former ruler of Yukai. If you want to seduce me, go on. Take off your clothes and dance naked before me, though. I must warn you that I do not stick my thing inside something that has been used by the other males beforehand, to put it bluntly. I have no interest in you, of course I have no hate for slut but it'll never allow your kind to embrace me. The anger in Yasaka shifted toward another direction. She was not a slut. It was true that each year she had sex with at least a male. There was one occasion she had five men to satisfy her. But, she was not a slut. She had not found a husband yet. Those males she had sex with were candidates. That was the reason she had sex with them. But, none of them was a father material. She needed a husband that could become a father figure to her daughter, not a man only to satisfy her lust. Well, it's true that her lust was big, it's something natural among her kin, but still she's no slut. If she was a slut, she would not have any problem opening her legs to any useful male. Odin, Azazel, even Zeus would fly toward her just so they could stick their thing inside her for a price, but, she had never had sex with them, and she would not spread her legs for them even though they gave her a very powerful weapon or a lifetime protection, she selected her partners. A kind male that could keep secret was one of the criteria they must have. Having big D was another one among many, therefore, she was no slut. I am not a slut, so she stressed that to the strongest nine tails in history. Is that so? Having sex with total 137 different men does not make you a slut? Yusaka was aghast. Ho how? She asked, couldn't believe that her well-kept secret being found. It does not matter, now then, go on and tell me, what do you want? It is irritating being growled at, and I have no interest in discussing what makes a woman a slut. Yusaka controlled her breath, calming herself. It took almost a minute, but in the end she managed to calm down. She took a deep breath, opened her mouth. I want you to consider not sending the Yukai to their death. We will not win against them, and I have good relationship with Lady Amaterasu and Lady Sukuyomi. That is something you decide on your own, so you must bear the responsibility. As if I do need help from weaklings, you should be grateful that I, the mighty Kurama, decide to save you all from your pitiful fate. Now, be gone. I am waiting for Naruto to arrive. We will put those self-proclaimed gods to their place. Yusaka should be angry that she and her people got insulted, but, a smile appeared on her lips, so you can't deal it alone. Afraid of losing, aren't we? The smile curled widely, it told nothing but satisfaction. I I just thought that a supreme king such as myself should not reveal my true strength. HMPH. Go away, woman. My patience is already on its limit. Era. Era. Kurama flared his frightening chakra. Yusaka quickly ran away. She wasn't going to stay to see what would happen if she kept standing before the king. How annoying. Muttered Kurama right after the weak Kyubi left his sight. I will leak her secret to the public. There's no one who belittled him and got away without consequence. He was the mighty Kyubi. He's afraid of no one but he had learnt from his past, Madara, Hashirama, and that idiot masked man, he was not going to accept another defeat, his pride needed to be maintained. What take you so long? Asked Kurama as soon as the blonde he's waiting appeared from magic circle. I got lost on the road of life, on my way back, there's a black cat standing in my way, so, remembering my teacher's advice, I decided to take a detour so that I did not be swarmed by misfortunes. Anyway, Naruto stopped his mouth as he sat comfortably on a golden throne that appeared from the golden ripple in the air. The throne then floated about two meters above the floor, making it higher than Kurama's throne. You can start explaining. 
said the blonde with right cheek rested on his right palm, looking down on the Supreme King with cold eyes. Karama had to admit that he was a little intimidated by the brat, there's no warm radiating from the blonde, his body was shrouded in cold kingly aura, that arrogant blonde spirit from back then flashed before his eyes, so was Asura, it looked like those two memories already become one with the brat, Karama didn't know if Naruto did that intentionally or by instinct, but perhaps he really got influenced by those two. I make no mistake, started Karama, looking mockingly at the blonde, he was not going to accept being looked down upon, regardless of who did it, I bring hope and freedom to these poor yukai, but those self-proclaimed gods wish to chain them back with the servitude they do not deserve, I reject their wish, and they declare war on me, it is not my mistake, is it? I see, so, will you join me, Naruto? Your job is only to hold Izanagi. That is if he comes, I will handle the rest, I will face Izanagi after I am done with those fools. You seem confident, you think you're stronger than Izanagi. After testing the power of Leyline and think deeply about it, I believe I can gather enough Senjutsu to surpass it, the more chakra you have, the stronger you can become with Senjutsu, I have way more chakra than any of my siblings. You can use Senjutsu? I have not tried, but nothing I cannot do. Karama had lived long enough to understand how to gather nature energy, his father was a sage, Hashirama was a sage, he had seen some an animal using Senjutsu, besides, using Leyline's energy was similar to being in Senjutsu mode, it made him one with nature, he just needed to stay calm and force himself to be one with nature, even though he had never tried it, he should be able to do it, he is the mightiest biju, if a giant animal can do such thing, why couldn't he? I see, then, I will assist you, but, I have two conditions, first, prepare a costume and a mask for me to wear, mask that hides my devil's presence, second, you will teach me your senjutsu style after we're done with Shinto pantheon. Oh, right, Asura was not a real sage, he got power from Hagoromo, it's no wonder that Naruto couldn't learn senjutsu on his own. Fine, Kurama had no problem with teaching the blonde, your conditions accepted. Very well, the golden throne disappeared, Naruto landed gracefully, anything else? I plan on creating a shinobi system in my kingdom, I will teach those ignorant fools how to use chakra properly, and not so far in the future, I will have shinobi, kunoichi and recreate anbu of my own, what do you think? Naruto stared at the strongest tailed beast for dozen seconds, but after that he smiled faintly, you are taking this supreme king seriously, he said, kinda amused at the nine tails, thanks for watching.